pick up. You know, I always made fun of the Armstrongs. I mean, they're a good team, but they always have that nice boy image. You know, they like to smile and shake hands with the people and, you know, talk about country and western stuff and music and hillbilly stuff, you know. And, uh, but they're a good team. They're second, third, fourth, fifth generation wrestling family. Oh, you like them now. I like their attitude. Yeah. I like a guy that's aggressive. I like the guy that takes the bull by the horn. He has to shave his head and lose an ear. Oh. Oh, my. Big forearm shot right on the top of the head. The fans love it. They're behind Harlemeen here. And Booker T's in control. Scott Dickinson, the referee, calling for a break in the corner. And coming out, uh, an eye gouge here. And, uh, oh, look at this. Yeah, this is good teamwork right here. One of the uh, James brothers has the uh, another double team, and the referee is being pulled out of position. Good tag team wrestling. Watch, referee turns around, nothing happening. Yep, you heard the tag, didn't you, ref? You big dummy. Whether they heard a tag or not, but right now the referee's saying, hey, wait a minute, there, there was no tag here. And you know, from the back, they look alike. They can switch, there's a lot of great things you can do. In the span of what, five minutes here, we've seen the transformation of a new team, and we've seen Bobby the Brain Heenan finally say some good things about the former Armstrong brothers, now James brothers here. Well, I just like their attitude, they're aggressive. Foot to the face, whoa oh boy! See, everything's happening here in wrestling, the wrestling world here at WCW. I mean, number one rated television programming, sell out of houses every place we go. Pay-per-views are tremendous. Everybody wants a piece of that cake. Everybody wants to make that big money. To have that big star shine on them. Now, if, you, if you have to do it this way, Armstrong, do it. Exchange. You have to make your own noise. Yeah, and uh, that's what they're doing here, Exchange. And uh, right now, the Armstrongs, I'm sorry, the James Brothers, Looking pretty darn good. Here's a big splash. Come on! Kick out in a two. They kind of have that street look to them, you know? That, that kind of, I'll sleep in a refrigerator box. Well, yeah, maybe that's a good way to put it. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what you call it, but it's bizarre. But in the same breath, effective here. Arm Heat's just too powerful for this team. In the midsection, scoop slam, down. But if you know how to wrestle, you can just about have your way. No, sir. That time, uh -oh. the other brother combination made the exchange. The big one's in. It's Stevie Ray. Right hand, fist of fire, up in. Save. Oh, it must be spring because he's doing some planting out there. Look at this double team. Well, they are aggressive, Brain. Yeah, it seems their new name and their new attitude has really changed them. Oh, did you hear that? Uh oh. Double team. Oh! What a move! The big apple one, two, three. What do they call that? The big apple. Wow. Tell you, the Armstrongs and the James brothers are going to be all right. They need a little management. Oh, yeah? They certainly do. Until we get to go, there's a lot of suckers around here, Cotton and But we're on our way back. Hey, I'm going to watch them on suckers. Get ready. All right. Why do they wear those things on their noses? Are they trying to quit smoking? No, it helps them breathe. Oh. Take a look here. The James Brothers in action. Harlem Heat just levels one of the James boys. Big power here. Watch this. Not satisfied with this slam. Picks them up and just plants them right into that mat. Takes one of the James Brothers over the top rope and almost eliminates himself. Now watch this. They call it the Big Apple. Kick right in the side of the head. He's going nowhere. Your winner, Harlem Heat. Still to come, Stephen Regal, Glacier will be here this week and much more. Right now, we'll be right back.
This portion of WCW Worldwide Wrestling is brought to you by Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know use Valvoline. Back on Worldwide Wrestling, and uh, fans, uh, do not forget, we have some great action coming up later on this telecast, including uh, Stephen Regal, the new television champ against Chris Jericho. Regal wins the TV belt recently at uh, Slamboree. And uh, here's a man who was a former champ, defeated Regal for that belt, and quite a run as the champ, Prince Iakea. Listen to the music. Can't you picture Lee Marshall and Tanane at meat boiling hot with carrots and potatoes? Well, yeah, yes, I can. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, doesn't it? No, it doesn't sound good, but it looks pretty good. Marshall Stew with Mike Meat. Can't live any better than that. Ray Mysterio Jr. This man's come a long way. From Mexico. Always comes a long way. Here we go, Brain. Should be a great matchup. Former champs going at it. And great champs, I might add. Hello, Brain. Are you talking here? I'm watching. I don't have to say. I just... I say things when I feel like them. I'm observing now. You'll learn a lot more if you observe. Everybody be quiet. As everyone is quiet, let's remind the fans that the Great American Bash comes your way Sunday, the 15th of June. The event is available exclusively on pay-per-view. It originates from the Market of the Quad in Moline, Illinois. Make your plans right now to join us for WCW's summertime tradition, the Great American Bash. Sunday, June 15th. Call your local cable operator right now and inquire about availability, and don't miss WCW's Bash in June. Oh! That hurts. Here's a cover one, two. Sometimes you know, the guy throws you up by that, you don't know if you're going to come down on your knees, your stomach, your elbows, you don't know what to land on. You're just, you're just up there. Yes, yeah, I'm sure it's a scary place to be. Prince, good maneuver. Oh! How about that? I like pick. that move. Fireman's carry type takeover. One, two, no. Gonna really use his weight here. What are they chanting? Let's go, Ray. Let's go. They love Ray Mysterio Jr. And of course, Prince I.K., a big fan favorite as well. Now they they love Ray Mysterio, right? Of course they do. I mean, they love him. I mean, every holiday, all these people here buy him gifts. Birthdays, Christmas. He gets cards and letters, and all these people give him money and stuff and buy him things. They love him, right? No, not, not to that extent. What are you talking about? Well, oh, then they don't love him. They like him. All right, they like him. Now, you can love me, Tony, if you want to buy me some stuff. I wouldn't. Forget it. Snapmare take over. One, two. I'll tell you, Diamond Dallas does not love a macho man. And how about Diamond Dallas and the macho man Randy Savage at the main event for the Great American Bash? You know, I'm impressed with this Diamond Dallas, just for the, the sheer amount of intestinal fortitude the man has. Break on the whole NWO by himself. He would. Oh! Wow, standing sidekick. Well, that was nicely done. One, two, Prince. Now, well, why are the people booing? It's illegal. Maybe it's oh. because they love Ray Mysterio Jr., you think? Or I mean, all these people here <laughs> come to his house Stop. and buy him stuff. <laughs> They don't really love him, then. All right, they like him. Would you? This is a deja vu all over again. Would you stop? You love the Yankees? One, two, yes. And that's you buy I'm... them all stuff? <laughs> you have them over to your house? Then you don't really love them, do you? Somebody, could I get a producer to come over here at our broadcast location and hit him over the head with something? Holy Moses. Forearm <laughs> oh, oh! What agility. What agility. Mysterio outside now. From the toe. Oh! That time I think he hurt a knee, Brain, when he landed. Yeah, it looked like it buckled under him. Slowly staggering over now to his opponent. Ray Mysterio oh! Jr. back to the attack again. Oh, he seems to be moving okay. <laughs> Into the midsection. Here we go again. Up top. Oh, it's a tough spot now. 
That was a good maneuver by the French to, to stun. Oh! What could this mean? The helicopter up there. The hurricane oh! model! One, two, see ya! I want to see this again. You know what? I love this move. You do? Not really. You? Well, I've never bought any yet. Forget it. Go to the replay. The replay is hey, brought to you by Valvoline. Used by America's top mechanics. I got the power. I got the strength. You sure do. Take off those heavyweights. People who know use Valvoline. Here we go again. We go back to the brain. We'll just take a look here at this Rey Mysterio. He can come off that second rope. He can come off the top rope, the bottom rope. He can jump that high without even using the rope. Look at this. Plants the man. Sets him up. The prince is pretty well groggy right now. And just watch this. Is that a move? That's the move. Or is that a move? That's you a love move. that move? Not really. It's the Hurricane Rana, and your winner is Rey Mysterio Jr. With our Mavily replay, people who know use Mavily back with more. Listen to this. WCW Worldwide Wrestling, Universal Studios, Florida. Great American match. Coming up, and two matches have been signed, including Diamond Dallas. And the Macho Man Randy Savage, the big return match, plus Steve Mongo McMichael and Kevin Green one-on-one. -on -one. You're talking about two matches featuring four guys who hate each other. You've got it right there, Brain. Well, did you see how McMichael went after uh, Kevin Green the other night in the dressing room? Oh, yeah. I don't know why guys want to pull him apart. Let him go. Let him fight. For all the years I've known Savage, I've disagreed with him on a lot of things. But I've always respected the man for having at least the ability to want to fight and would sacrifice his body. And I'll tell you, looking at Diamond Dallas Page, Savage looks a little bit worried. All right, the light's dim here, and that means... My wallet's gone. <laughs> that means Glacier is making his way to the ring. Another in my other pants. Glacier certainly has had his share of problems at the hands of... Mortis and Wrath and Team Vandenberg, but may have found himself an ally in Ernest Miller, former karate champion. As a matter of fact, he's a current heavyweight champion in tournament karate. That occurred at Slamboree as well. And you know, this guy needs an ally. I know he's tough, he's undefeated, but you cannot continue to fight three and four guys at a time by yourself, right? I mean, I don't, you're right, as good as you are, as good as this guy is, he's still a human being. You still got four guys pounding on you. There's not much you can do. You can fight for a while, but you only got two hands and two legs. Glacier makes his way in, still without his helmet. Owned by Vandenberg and his cronies. The Glacier, who had his knee severely pounded and beaten Slamboree. Not 100%, but that's not going to stop him from getting in the ring. Trainer, uh, what's his name? Chuck Tache? Chuck Tache, yeah. Right. Uh, he was back there. He had about 60, 60 yards of tape on him. Ready to get him ready. Did you, did you measure that tape? No, but I saw him. They were wrapping his leg. and He took a heck of a beating from Mortis and Rapp. If he had 60 yards of tape on his leg. Okay, 58 yards. I didn't measure. Big deal. Then hit. Then <laughs> got to be so precise. Mark Starr, the opponent for Glacier here. Thin tape. Notice that Nick Patrick is the referee. Nick Patrick has been reinstated in an interview we heard from James J. Dillon a week ago. And uh, certainly it's good. To, I think it's good to have him back. Well, they're watching him very carefully. They're going to yeah. watch him for 30 days. It's probationary period. You're right. In the corner, Glacier. Glacier a little bit more intense now than usual. You know why that is? Yes. Oh! Yeah, he's letting Vandenberg and his band of merry men know what they're up for. Good maneuver by Mark Starr. Look at that leg sweep. He is so quick. See how he took him time a little bit? Hitch there getting up. That's that knee. Oh! Cryonic kick. He's not going to get up now. 
you face Glacier, you're one planet kick away from a win. That's why it's always good to wear a helmet with a chin strap. That way you can find your head a lot easier after he kicks it off. Glacier is your winner, and Glacier continues the undefeated string in the ring. He's not lost a match, but he certainly has lost many wars or many battles against Ramp, Mortis, and James Vandenberg. He is one awesome athlete. The man is a weapon. Yes, yes he is. He is a weapon. He's a weapon. Good point. Here come the U.S. champ, Dean Malenko, and Stephen Regal, and Chris Jericho. Right now, though, listen to this. Worldwide Wrestling continues from Universal Studios, Florida. Great American Bash is just around the corner. In the 15th of June, and our fans watching this right near the end of May, 1st of June. Summertime is just about here. Kids are going to be getting out of school. They'll be going out for the, uh, the family outings. We have a big summer plan for WCW, including the Great American Bash in June, Bash at the Beach in July, and Hogwild returns to Sturgis, and the great Harley Rally in the month of August. That's a big summer for us. Speaking of big, big man here, Adrian Bird, to face the United States Heavyweight Champion, Dean Malenko, as... You like summer, Tony? Love summertime. You like sitting outside having lemonade? You like picnics? Yes. Little League? Love it. Going to the beach? Yes, I do. Realize Malenko never gets hot in the summer or any time of the year. This guy has ice water flowing yeah. through his veins. You know, he doesn't even sweat sometimes. Doesn't change expression. Seasons mean nothing to this man. Therefore, the name, the moniker, the Iceman. Right now, Adrian Bird, though, knocked him down. It was a good maneuver by the youngster Bird. Bird seemingly has a lot of confidence here, Brian. Looks like he's wearing a lampshade. Fans, don't forget the Great American Bash is available exclusively on pay-per-view. It is Sunday, the 15th of June. The event will originate from Moline, Illinois, and the Mark of the Quad. There's a cover. Got a one count. Be sure to call your local cable operator and be part. It's never too late to call. Sunday, the 15th of June, the Great American Bash from Moline, Illinois. Diamond Dallas Page and the Macho Man Randy Savage again. Malenko's smart. Malenko's going to keep him on the mat. He's not going to try to match strength with this guy. It's obvious this, this guy Bird's a big, strong power lifter. Oh! Boy, was that great execution or what? But you can't lift uh, those heavy weights with just your chin and your mouth. And that's where he put the drop kick, right there on the chin. Look, look at the expression. Nothing. Nothing. Unless you're Adrian Bird, then that's the expression of pain, is what that is. Yeah, I think he said, I've had enough. You listen real close, that's what he said. Ref, I've had enough. I can hear him from here. Arm bar. Back up, vertical position now. Pretty good shape on uh, Adrian there. Yeah, he's a, he's a strong guy. Drop to a hole. But this man can wrestle. Yeah, Malenko has been, has been content here with keeping the, the man down. And, of course, he wins the U.S. title, holds on to it, retains it against Jeff Jarrett. You know, Malenko, the type of athlete, because of his many maneuvers and his abilities, he could hold on to a title for a long period of time. Would you agree with that, Brian? I don't know. Stanley Cup would be rough. No, I'm talking about the U.S. belt. Oh, yeah. Wrestling title. Oh, you said title. I just thought you meant anything else. Stanley Cup. Would be rough. You are such a bozo. That's a clown. Yeah. Exactly. Pick up. Yeah, he's deceiving too, Malenko. He's a lot stronger than he looks. Two count. Very compact. Very strong man. Oh. He's taking his time. Yeah, it's, it's methodical is what it is. Yeah. 
He's not going to let himself get in a position where this man can beat him. I think he feels the man has the, the power to beat him, but he doesn't have the ability or the, the knowledge or the years in the ring. But he doesn't really want to make a mistake with him yet. Well, Malenko has said many times that he will put the U.S. title on the line against anyone. And uh, allow me to play matchmaker here a little bit. I'd love to see him give Ming a shot. The Barbarian a shot. I'd love to see him give the Giant a shot. Me too. Or the Nature Boy Ric Flair now that he's back. What a great match that would be. But the Giant, can you imagine trying to catch Malenko? Malenko trying to stay away from him? What a classic match that would be. Adrian Bird holds his ground nicely. Oh, good quickness by Bird. Bird oh. with a great drop kick, and that was nicely done. Two count. Like I said, Malenko doesn't want to make a mistake. He didn't make a mistake right there, Brian. He looked darn good. Oh, no. Power slam. Adrian Bird. That time, he, he could have maybe won the match with a little bit into slice of cover. Standing switch, Malenko. Move. Boy, when you're in the clutches of D. Malenko, there's a two. You hit the match so hard with such force. Bird's giving a good showing of himself. Looks darn good here, you're right. Oh, look at that. When you least expect it, we're going to Texas. And get off at the Clover League. Didn't take you long. Now nah, he didn't want to waste any more time with this guy, Adrian Bird. I better not play around anymore. Of course, I don't ever think the man plays around anyway in there. But look at the expression. None. Come on back. A little challenge to his arch enemy, his nemesis, Eddie Guerrero. He says, come on back. Eddie's still nursing some injuries. Not 100%, not back in the ring yet, but let's take a look at Malenko's win. See, now, I, I heard different about that. Right there on the money, a good drop kick by the Iceman, Dean Malenko. Gets shot into the corner, but brings that right foot up real quick. It's Mr. Bird right in the beak. Good power slam out of the Bird, man. But too much. Dean Malenko, too much knowledge. Slaps him in that Texas Clover Leaf in Tweet Tweet City for Mr. Bird. Your winner, Dean Malenko. I want you to tell me what you heard differently about Eddie Guerrero, and we'll be right back. This portion of WCW Worldwide Wrestling is brought to you by Winter Fresh Gum from Wrigley. Icy cool flavor for icy cool breath that lasts and lasts and lasts. Recently at Slamboree, we had the coronation, if I can use that term, and I know what it applies to this man, I can. The coronation of a brand new champion. A return, if you will, of Lord Steven Regal to the championship scene. Fourth time that Regal has been the television champ. Here he comes, Steven Regal. I think I may have called him Lord again. It'll take a while for us to get used to not calling him Lord Steven Regal. You know why he, he said to stop using Lord? Yes. Why? You don't know, do I you? I do, too. Because um, he wants to be known as Steven Regal. That's right. But why? You don't That's know. That's his name. That's right, too. Okay, I'm right two out of two times. What more? Do I win the duck or the bird? You're in the bird, and here it is. Hey, don't do that to me. Chris Jericho making his way to the ring, and a youngster with a lot of fire and vigor and talent. But Steven Regal, very embarrassed about the royal family. Mm -hmm. And so he, he, he wants to have nothing to do with that anymore. That seems unpatriotic to me. That's a, no, no, it, what it is is... The man has so much pride and dignity, he doesn't feel like he's treated fairly here. Well, I wonder why. Maybe because he's, he's a little snooty. He's a jerk is what he is. Not a jerk. He's a little snooty, but some people are like that. He's an educated man. And he can wrestle. So can Chris Jericho, so it should be a great main event matchup. The World Television Champ Regal and Chris Jericho in the one-on-one -on -one matchup. Jericho, you know, Jericho approaches every match the same way, 110 percent. Mr. Intensity, he's hungry, no doubt about it. 
Everybody wants that big star slot on WCW. Sure they do. Everybody wants the main events. Everybody wants that uh, title. Everybody wants to be involved. Things are happening so quick and fast here. And the world is really watching us. USA champ, and uh, Jericho loves it as you look at the crowd on hand. But to be successful against Regal, you have to realize that you are going to be in there against a man who is a complete technical wrestler, a scholar of the technical side of wrestling, if you will, Lord Stephen Regal. And no matter what you put on him, he's got a counter for it and will put you in something. Well, how about that one we just saw? Right to the side of the ear, that rings your bell. But he always stays within the rules. I don't know why they're booing him. He's got a count of five to quit doing that, and he stopped at four. Jericho's going to be a, a major star very shortly here. He is in Japan. Yes, he is. They love him in Japan. An international star, Chris Jericho. Father, great hockey player. And, of course, we're in the midst of the Stanley Cup playoffs, and uh, Chris closely follows the uh, Stanley Cup. His father played for the Kings, played for the Rangers. Traded him a lot, huh? Couldn't keep a job. Well, they, and now Wayne Gretzky's been traded a lot, too, now, hasn't he? And yeah. he will be considered as the greatest player of all time. Gretzky? Yeah. Nah. All right, who do you think? I'm not going to go into this with you. Here's a cover, Vaughn. I think it's uh, I think Stephen Regal. If he slapped on a pair of skates, he could go out there and do it. The man's a determined winner his whole life. You know, he started out wrestling when he was young, very young, a teenager. Went to Wiggins, trained over there. I mean, whole life he's won it. If he wanted to play hockey, he could. Bridging out Regal, and good move by Jericho. Mark Curtis says got him for two, and that was all. Determination plus here, Regal. Feet to the midsection. Sends the man over. Is he going? Up top. On drag takeover. Good maneuver by Jericho. Here he goes again. But show you how smart Steven Regal he gets out of the way. Well, he didn't get out of the way of that one, did he? Jericho with a version of his missile drop kick, sending Regal on the outside. And Regal, oh boy, he'll fight anybody. When's the last time you rolled down a flight of steps? Me? Oh yeah, Christmas party. <laughs> what are you talking about? You weren't there. What have you heard? Nothing. I heard about it. You heard nothing. Head first. And a pulling the head. Neck snapping it on the top rope. Well, he takes advantage of all the tools out there. He's got three ropes, four turnbuckles, four ring posts, a ring table, chairs, bells. You don't use it, somebody's going to use it on you. The man has so much wrestling knowledge. Cross faces there, rubs that wrist bone into the eyes. Now hooks his beak with his index finger. His nose. Size of a beak. Would you please leave this youngster alone? So he didn't play in that band, Guns and Noses. Oh my goodness! You're in rare form this week, aren't you? I'm excited. Everything happening here. Yeah, boy, and we're always excited when we head to the Great American Bash on Sunday, June 15th. The event available only on pay-per-view, fans. It'll be a big weekend for us. As a matter of fact, on the 15th we are in uh, Moline. On Sunday, the very next day, we are in Chicago United Center for right. another event of WCW Monday Nitro. Chris Jericho. There we got him. But he did. I think the knee hit the head. Regal back up. And Regal back down. Jericho back elbow down. That's the trouble with those high aerial moves. Sometimes you connect. Sometimes you barely. Sometimes you don't. Backhand shot. Into the corner. Back body drop. He's a little good for his lordship here. He's backpedaling. One, two, three. How ironic. As luck would have it, his toes accidentally hooked the rope. Yeah.
Yeah, the rope was just accidentally there, right? Well, the rope wasn't accidentally there. His feet were accidentally there, but he accidentally hooked his toe. Maybe we'll see more of it. He was robbed. He was absolutely robbed. I'm not living a lie anymore. But he is still the television what champ. I'm going to show you. Steven Regal. Okay, get out of here. Show him some respect. Get out of here. We gotta. You show him some respect. Oh, I should. Oh, the Guerreros made it. Go ahead. You know, our theme song should have words. You mean the worldwide? Yeah. I could come up with some. Let's get a look at this. Jericho. Doesn't get him good with the kick. Not as good as he'd have liked to, but Regal bats into that corner. Playing a little possum, maybe. Jericho goes to take him off with a monkey flip, and yes. Now, see, this is what I'm talking about. He puts his feet up just for a leverage to kick in the air, and they get caught on that rope as, <laughs> as luck would have it. Well, there's your winner. A new name, Steven Regal. Mm -hmm. Okay, Brian, here's a look at next week's program. WCW Worldwide Wrestling in one week will present... Dean Malenko, the U.S. heavyweight champion in action. And only that, the big man, the big train with Teddy Long. They'll be here as well. Plus, Chris Benoit with Woman returns to action. First time since Slamboree. That's right, and screwing the light bulbs real tight. We got some high voltage. We really do. They'll be here in tag team action. For the brain, Bobby Heen and I am Tony Schiavone. See you one week on Worldwide Wrestling. Yep. Worldwide Wrestling from Universal Studios in Florida. And this week, Bobby the Brain Heenan, Dave Taylor from England will be with us. Also, Tony Schiavone, Greg the Hammer Valentine's here. He'll be here in single competition as well as the big, powerful ice train, along with Kenny Long. And check these two live wires out. High voltage. They'll be in our main event against Harlem Heat. It's all next. Along with the Brain, Bobby Heenan, I am Tony Schiavone, one week from the Great American Bash. Great matches coming to you on pay-per-view television, including a world tag team title bout. How about this one, Brain? The Outsiders, the champs, will defend against Ric Flair and Rowdy Roddy Piper. Something smells funny to me. About what? When I manage tag team champions, we never challenged anybody. When you're champions, you never challenge anybody. For the Outsiders to come out here and challenge Flair and Piper, think about it. Who's the man that beat Hulk Hogan two different occasions? The icon, Roddy Piper. Who's the hottest commodity right now in this sport? Ric Flair. You're right. Seems to me the Outsiders and Hogan and everybody else in the NWO have a plan. Piper and uh, Flair could be in some serious serious trouble. Serious trouble coming up next Sunday at the Great American Bash on pay-per-view. Right now, let's go to the ring. Great action on Worldwide. In the arena now, and we have great singles competition open up this one hour of WCW Worldwide Wrestling. Brain, we are one week away now from the Great American Bash, and as we talked about during the opening, the world awaits Dave Savage 2, no disqualification, but a lot of other great matches we're going to discuss during the course of this telecast, including Steve Mongo McMichael going one-on-one -on -one against Kevin Green. Well, just to bring back a little page in history, remember the first match with Savage and Page? Savage wound up with torn ligaments, leg in a cast on crutches. Simon Dallas wound up having to have acupuncture, having had ice put on his back for about four or five days. I mean, they took a heck of a beating at each other. And Diamond Dallas came away with that, that diamond cutter. You watch Savage this time. He, the look in his eyes is the same look I've seen before. But the look in Paige's eyes, very definite. All right, we see Dave Taylor, the former British Empire heavyweight champion, in the ring already, and he'll have to face uh, one of the toughest in the history of our sport, I, I could uh, confidently say, because you're going to find anyone in this era or in the past as tough as Chris Benoit. Well, there's been a lot of tough guys over the years from the past, like a Mad Dog Bichon. Sure. I mean, very tough customers. But this man... A guy like the dog was a dog. He went out there and ripped you apart. And the dog and was a dog. You're right. That's yeah. right. But this man, this man can do stuff off the top rope. This man can wrestle. This man has a tremendous physique, tremendous condition he's in. Uh, he's a hard, hard man to beat. He, he's a crippler. He didn't give himself that name. He earned it. Certainly did. Chris Benoit, the crippler. 
Canadian crippler, if you will, and woman at, at ringside with you. And here we go, the opening bout this week on Worldwide Wrestling. Summertime is here. We love summer. And it all kicks off the Great American Bash next Sunday. What a summer it's going to be. Great American Bash. Bash at the beach in July. Hog Wild, Sturgis, South Dakota in August. Going to be three great events, three great months of summertime fun with World Championship Wrestling. Fun for the fans, fun for us. But if you're Paige or Savage or your Mongo or Kevin Green or maybe Flair and Piper or the Outsiders, it's not going to be fun. It's going to be pretty tough for you. Well, you know, the Outsiders, they're trying to start a lot of friction. They're trying to uh, split the ranks of Piper and Flair, so they're going to think they're going to have fun, but I don't think it'll happen. When it comes time for Flair to have fun, everyone has fun. That's true. Right now, though, uh, one of the horsemen, Benoit, not having fun as he is down face on the mat and uh, being overwhelmed the opening moment of this match by Dave Taylor. Dave Taylor, like Stephen Regal, dropped the Lord of the Squire moniker because they are very embarrassed and upset about the, the recent turn of events over the past couple of years with the Royal Family with Fergie. They want to really distance themselves from that. But in the ring, they're royalty. There's no doubt about that or nobility. These two men are great, and here comes Benoit firing back now, Brain. No doubt about it, and he has got one thing on his mind. And his name is Sullivan. Kevin Sullivan. He's had to go through a lot to get a match with Kevin Sullivan. Has he ever. But he will get his match, there's no doubt about it, sooner or later. Sullivan, who took a, a sabbatical, self-imposed. Yeah, to get his head straight. Yeah. To get his head straight. Where'd he go, Jurassic Park? Yeah. He'll never get his head straight. You know that, and I know that. Well, there's nothing in there, but... Evil thoughts all day. Well, you know, his family has nothing to do with him. He's beaten up his family many times. He likes to beat him up on holidays, oh. brothers and stuff. Not a nice man. No, he isn't. Yeah, I know brothers fight when they're younger, but uh, older? Oh, it's not over a, an erector set or a ball glove or something. It's over serious stuff with Sullivan, like a, like a buffalo wing or something like that that's, that he wants to have. That's serious stuff. To huh? him it is. Now, uh, Benoit does not care about the past. He is thinking about the future, and for Benoit, his future is to get in the ring with Sullivan once again. Meanwhile, he turns around and fires up on Dave Whoa. Taylor, and Taylor goes head first to the mat now. And, the Dave, and Dave Taylor is no slouch by any means, like you said, former British Empire champion. Man very knowledgeable in that ring, but this man, the crippler, is just overpowering. He knows when he hits you, Tony, he didn't, he didn't draw back and nail you with that big punch that just rocks you. He hits you with about five or six short ones that can knock you out. It's the velocity of the way he throws those punches. Pulling up on the leg, and the crippler, instead of just trying to get out of there, and the referee certainly calling for the break, just puts a cross face on to try to muscle his way out. But there's a European-style uppercut, and as you can see, it's rocking Benoit back and off his feet here. Well, it really does. You know, you're bent over to begin with, and then when you're hit across the chest there, it just takes all your wind out of you. Sometimes it gets you in the jaws, it jacks your jaw. If you got a funny taste in your mouth, you can't really see real well. Very descriptive there, Brain. They don't feel good. There's the crippler crossface. That'll wait just give me one, one in London once. And you probably deserved it. And with the crippler crossface... Oh, I deserved it. I'm sure you did. Oh, ben no about it is your winner and there's a very happy woman nancy if you want to call her by her first name at ringside as the crippler wins again he wants to put that cross face on sullivan and i can tell you he won't let it go when well, he gets it on well you got to be very very careful of kevin sullivan because wherever kevin sullivan is Jacqueline's usually pretty close by. That's right. And woman, I don't care how devious you are, or how long your fingernails are, or how sharp the heel on your shoe is, Jacqueline is one tough customer. Wow. Be careful, woman. Be careful. There's Benoit. Cross face. Takes the squire down. Squire has to give up. There's just no place to go. Look at the pressure on the lower spine. Across the upper face area. There's your winner. From the horseman, Benoit. Come on back with us on Worldwide. This portion of WCW Worldwide Wrestling is brought to you by Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know use Valvoline.
Worldwide Wrestling continues, and it's good to have you with us. We're going to be talking a lot about the Great American Bash coming your way on the 15th of June. Right now, one of the great veterans in our sport, truly known nationwide, worldwide, as one of the heaviest hitters. Huh. That's where the name Hammer comes from, Greg the Hammer Valentine. Yeah, they say when he hits your crust the chest, just like his father used to, uh, the great Johnny Valentine, he hit you so hard, they said you felt like you were hit with a sledgehammer. Greg Valentine to face Johnny Swinger in this one-on-one -on -one matchup break. Well, Mr. Swinger's in there with no doubt a veteran. You got to be careful of the hammer. He's been up and down the roads. He's been through those ropes, and when I'm that match, he knows this sport. All right, here we go. Swinger and Valentine. There's Nick Patrick reinstated and refereeing again. How about that? They're watching him, though, I think. I still think they're keeping a pretty close eye on him. Want to remind you that WCW's Great American Bash comes to Moline, Illinois, the mark of the quad. That's the venue, that's the site of this live pay-per-view spectacular. But for you fans all around the world, all across the country, the only way you can see this mega event is on pay-per-view. And the way you do that is very simple. You call your local cable operator or satellite dish subscriber and say, I want to see Page Savage 2, and I want to see the Great American Bash exclusively on pay-per-view on Sunday, June 15th. Valentine, he's known for his, he wants the match to go a long time. He wants you to fight him. He wants you to pound him. Because the longer the match goes, the tougher this guy gets. He don't get warm until sometimes after the 35 minute mark. Elbow in the back of the head by Valentine. There's a little bit of the hammer maneuver. So much power and force in the back of the head. And Valentine shoved Johnny Swinger outside. Well, Johnny, you may be swinging from the arms of Mr. Valentine when he's done. Listen to this. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, boy. That not only sounded, that felt bad. You could feel it. Like sound waves crushing through the arena. <laughs> the hammer, Greg Valentine, the fans showing him a lot of respect. Giving him a lot of cheers here, and that's certainly a celebration of a wonderful career he's had through many years in the sport. And seemingly just getting better. Pick up, good move by the Hammer, sending the man back to the mound. Great physical condition, and he knows what to do in that ring. Big elbow drop, one, two, three. It's been known to call that elbow drop the brain buster elbow. The Hammer, Greg Valentine, dominates this match here on Worldwide, right? No doubt about it. There's your winner, the man from Seattle, Washington. He's had some battles. One tough customer, no doubt about it. Probably held just about every major title in this sport. Your swinger's going to know it. When he wakes up in the morning, sees those big marks across his chest. I've been in there with the Hammer. His name is Greg Valentine. We have six-man action to come, and we'll take you back to Nitro. But right now, listen to this. It's time for some great, high-flying, entertaining, Lucha Libre-style action on WCW Worldwide. It's time for a six-man tag. How about that? Either that, or we at the bullfight, amigo. No, Brain, you know, uh, I don't know if they're going to use Lucha Libre rules here or not, but if that's the case, then they don't have tag. It's going to be the team, as you're seeing right now, of Juventud Guerrero, Psychosis, and Lismark Jr. And there they are, and Mark Curtis trying to tell them what side to go to, and what's the thing that's going. It's not it won't matter. Much. That's right, it's not going to matter much. You better tell them which side of the ring to get in if they all go out on the floor. Their opponents... They'll take the fight any place. Another trio from Mexico. And three of the most successful. There's Viano 4, Galaxy, and Cicope. Oh, it's got one headlight. It's a mask, okay? Excuse me. Of course it's a mask. Nobody's eyes that high. <laughs> Lismark and Viano 4 will begin things. 
And Viano four wasting no time getting the offense started here. We've seen some sensational maneuvers and counter maneuvers from this, these Mexican wrestlers, especially Hector Garza, brand new star that we've seen from Mexico over the past couple of weeks, who is not involved in this one. Look at that backdrop or backflip. But that time, great running clothesline by Viano four. In the ropes, ducking low now. You know, I think the thing we forget more than anything is the tremendous conditioning these uh, wrestlers from south of the border are in. I yeah. mean, they take a heck of a pounding and beating. And boy, they don't quit. And no one exemplifies that more than Ray Mysterio Jr. There's a two count. Lismark almost had a win. There's going to be a tag here, so it's straight. Six-man tag rules. It's Galaxy and Psychosis in now. Got a drop kick. Viano 4 is in. I don't know what this is all about. There's a side headlock. Do they tag? Well, I thought they were not going to, and then they did, and now they didn't, so... Heck, I don't know. Reverse back kick that time, and a big running lariat. Outside goes Viano 4 in psychosis. Psychosis always looked like Peg Bundy to me. And now, two more oh. men are in. As two men are out, it's Hooventude and Galaxy. Up! Power bomb old mania there! Elbow drop. Tony, this may sound stupid to you, but who's legal? There's no legal man in Lucha no. Libre Wrestling. They're all legal. Whoa. He didn't know where he was. He almost went out backwards, turned real quick, <laughs> stumbled out of the ring. They sure did. Head first. Lismark, the remaining man with Syncope, up. Shoulder block and a forearm shot. And now, Syncope up top. That's what Lismark wants. Arm drag from the top rope down. I would just gouge his eye. Why not? Handspring. Backflip moonsault. One, two, three. He got him. What happened if he had two eyes? Lismark Jr., moving to Guerrero and Psychosis are your winners. And bring there the, actually the only two men remaining in the ring, Lucha Libre style wrestling. And your winners on Worldwide. Now do they get to cut their ears off? Oh, for crying out loud. They do it both fights. All right, let's... Well, the action just keeps on coming on Worldwide Wrestling. How about that breathtaking six-man tag we just saw? And now some singles competition featuring one of the great veterans, Hector Guerrero, and the United States champion, Dean Malenko. Look at that face on Guerrero. Look like he should be in a bag of chips. You have nothing nice, you've never had anything nice to say about the entire Guerrero family. Mother, father, Hector, Eddie, Chavo Jr., Chavo Sr., nothing. Okay, they're not as ugly as their aunt Consuelo. How's that? See, you, you always gotta see. see some, no. You speak Spanish also. No, that's not what I'm saying. You forget it. See. Here comes the Iceman himself, Dean Malenko, United States Heavyweight Champ, right? Never changed his expression. I doubt if he ever sweat. Steps through those ropes and knows exactly what he's got to do. He's got to get Dean Malenko in a position to win. That's all the man cares about. That's all he's lived for. That's all he's been trained to do. His whole life is wrestle. And that's what he does best. Let's not forget, fans, that the Great American Bash is next Sunday. That's June 15th. The event available exclusively on pay-per-view. Page Savage 2, no disqualification, many other great matches. You need to call your local cable operator right now and inquire about getting the event in your home. Satellite dish owners, you can call your respective number, DirecTV, Turner Premier. Be part of all the excitement, all the action of WCW's Great American Bash, Sunday night, June 15th, 7 o'clock Eastern, and available exclusively on pay-per-view. You know, Tony, I believe Hector is the older brother of uh, Eddie Guerrero. What do you hear about uh, his update on his physical health? Well, Eddie had been injured and uh, had torn uh, pectoralis muscle in his chest and uh, had been uh, on the shelf for a while, but Eddie is uh, going to be making his way back very soon, we understand. Well, there's no love loss between Malenko and the Guerrero. No, they, they, that's putting it mildly. As a matter of fact, uh, because of the problems that existed between Eddie and uh, Dean Malenko, uh, Malenko had on occasion tried to take out Hector or Chavo Jr. 
Why would you want to take out Hector? Imagine sitting with him the whole evening, shooting the breeze with him. That's not what I'm talking about. I didn't mean on a date. I mean, you know, shot in the back of the head, knock him out, take him out of wrestling. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> Here. He, he's a knucklehead is what he is, and I got to work with him. Snapmare takeover. And driving the uh, the point of the elbow down, the forearm, the Malenko. Everything with perfection. And do only... not get Hector Guerrero confused. No, you're confused. We don't need one confused person per program. Why? He is Hector Guerrero, yes. professional wrestler. Yes, of course he is. We know that. He is not son of Zorro. Cover one count only. He looks like him with the stash and everything. A, a cover again. You, you're not even funny now, Brain. And Malenko out. Not only does Malenko know so many holds, but he can apply them with perfection. He knows how to put them on. You know, there's, there's a roll up by Hector Juan. Got a one count. I hate to make the comp uh, comparison because Paige is not a polished wrestler. He's a fighter. Yeah. But his hold, the diamond cutter, is a lot like Guerrero, a lot like uh, Malenko. He can put that on from a lot of different ways. A lot of different angles and a lot of different positions. When you have a maneuver like the diamond cutter, you only need one. Because it doesn't matter what happens if he has it on you. He's got it. Look at this maneuver. It's like a Kiwi leg roll here that we've seen before. Hector has won matches with that on this program. But this time, uh, Malenko catches the bottom rope and that stops that. So Hector's done this move before. Yeah, he's won matches oh, on this program. Oh, that's what they mean. What do you mean? What are you talking oh, about? I heard the other day somebody said you got to be careful of the Guerreros. They'll roll you. Upon top and a good maneuver by the United States champion. It looks like we may be going to Texas. That's what it appears to be. Step through, over, and Hector in a tough spot here. And this one is over. But Tony knows how strong the legs were on Guerrero. Malenko couldn't sit down. Guerrero fought it that much, and I think the more he fought it, the worse it was, and he wasn't going any place. Should have just said, yeah, it's over. There'll be another day. Dean Malenko, the United States champion, continues the win streak, and it's our Castro torture test of the week. Well, Malenko wants Eddie Guerrero. That's the Guerrero he wants. But he'll take any Guerrero anytime he can get him. So it looks to me like... Malenko won, Guerrero's nothing. Bring on the next Guerrero, he'll go through the whole family. Because that man, the United States champion, right there, the winner, Dean Malenko, won, Eddie Guerrero. Castro GTX, the Motorola, that stands up to the most torturous conditions. Right now on Worldwide Wrestling, we invite you to listen to this. American Bash, live and on pay-per-view, break. You know, I feel very sorry for Kevin Green. I believe he's in a in a game now he doesn't know how to play. He's got to think back and remember this man. Steve Mongo McMichael started every game for the Chicago Bears and never missed one. He's that tough, that durable. He now gets into professional wrestling and becomes a member of the Horsemen. Why? Because they wanted him as a member. Rick Flair saw the potential in that man. Now the man goes out and he beats up and he beats up and he beats up Reggie White. Kevin Green, you may be Kevin Red when he's done with you. Think about it. Well, you know, the, the, the Reggie White match, uh, there's a lot more than uh, you just heard from the Brain fans about that. And certainly Reggie's going to have his day against Mongo again. The fact is, Kevin Green, pro football's top sack leader. Number one. Yeah, but he's got ten other guys helping him. Well, 
He's going to have nobody to help him when he's in there with Mongo. He's going to be no pads, no helmets, nothing. And a cover by the big guy, Roadblock, who wanted to get a quick win, and he and Mickey J with a little argument ensuing here. Now, this Roadblock's got to be what? Over 400 pounds. 400 pounds. That's and true. his weight is not distributed uh, proportionately, right? Obviously. That not. is the man Lex Luger tried three times to pick up in the torture rack, couldn't do it the first two, third time reached down, I don't know where he got it from, and put that man, that big roadblock there, right across his shoulders in that torture rack. That gave me new respect for Lex Luger. Yeah, and it did many people as well, Brain, you're right, good point. And I don't like the guy, but... Uh, you don't like anybody, really. Yes, I do, I like a lot of people. And you're not one of them, though. Ice train trying to mount a comeback here. It should be a fatality when you see Roadblock trying to stop this ice train. Wow, look at this. Big guy had to steam him again. Couldn't get him down. And we're going to Teddy Long out there. Oh, so one more time. He'll go down. Last call. I'll have another. Roadblock staggering to the center of the ring. And he didn't get him good, but he got him good enough. Sure did. Roadblock again. Boy, you don't really realize how massive Look this, at this ice train is. Ice train tried to pick him up. Good luck. And with ease, Roadblock sends ice train down. Teddy Long looks a little concerned. His meal ticket's getting slammed. Train him, try it again. Oh, oh my. The train wreck. It's over. That is what you call digging down deep, Brain, just like you were talking about with Lex Luger. Well, he realized he was in there with a big, big, tough guy and a big, heavy man. He wasted no time. Your winner is Ice Train. Main event time next on Worldwide. This portion of WCW Worldwide Wrestling is brought to you by Motel 6. The new Motel 6 is renovating across America. Call 1-800-4-MOTEL-6 for reservation. Danger, high voltage. And danger, there's a tag team war of brewing, and we've got it for you on Worldwide. One of the top young, as we say, use the old uh, term or cliche, up-and-coming tag teams. They're right there. They're right there. They're no more up and coming. They've gotten a lot of wins over the past couple of months. They're knocking on the door. High voltage. And what should be a supreme test of their power and confidence? Now, this guy right here, he's um, chaos. Chaos. You know he told me the other day? He said, thank goodness for Thomas Edison. He said, had he not invented the light bulb, we'd be watching TV in the dark. That's what the guy tells me. He told you that? He told me that. And meant it. Wow. Put his finger in the socket a few times. Well, you're not kidding, he has. Now, the opponents here, like we said at the top of the program, are bad. Are bad, and many times over, World Tag Team Champions, take an exception to the fact that uh, they are not considered top contenders. They feel that they are being slighted. They feel that they should be the number one contenders, not the Steiners. And that's the short point with the duo and the lady there, Sister Sherry. Here they come, and it's hard really to discount these two, and it's hard really, you know when you talk about the Steiners and Harlem Heat, and you say number one contenders, it's, it's really a tough choice. Jump really ball. Yeah. I mean, uh, say what you want about the Steiners, they're not the brightest two guys walking this earth, but they'll fight you all day and night, and they do have a tremendous, impressive win loss record. If you look at Harlem Heat on the other hand, They'll fight you two all night. And they've been in the trenches here at WCW. They've had ups, they've had downs, they've had trouble with Sherry. They've had her back. They've been knocked out of the tag team picture. They've had the title. And I'm telling you, they're ready to explode again. They're both knocking on the door. Signers of Harlem Heat. Nick Patrick, the referee assigned. We mentioned earlier he had been reassigned by James J. Dillon, reinstated, so to speak, and on a probationary period. And I think what we're now, what, two weeks into this probationary period, and so far, everything's on uh, an even keel. He's done a good job. He's back to that. Has he done that, a good job, or they just haven't caught him yet? Well, oh, come on, Brain. He's a very assertive, no-nonsense guy. Guys that, when you were in the sport as a wrestler and a manager, did not like. And that's why you like to knock him. Because he caught me. 
course he did. Well, he never caught me, but people like him caught me. Yes. I like to be caught. And right now, uh, Rage is caught in the corner because we are seeing Stevie Ray, the big guy in Harlem Heat, just pummel the man. And there's your no-nonsense referee warning, Stevie Ray. Reversal. Got the foot up, and as the man really moved his head away, D.B. Ray kicked him in the chest, lariat run down that time. You know, D.B. Ray lumbers around that ring, big, powerful man. He's extremely fast, though. Oh, very fast. They are extremely fast. Oh, look at Sherry. Quick. Go ahead, I'm sorry. What about? I didn't mean to interrupt you. I don't not... mean to interrupt you. You know that, Tony. I wouldn't do that. You know, I apologize for that, Tony. Well, Golly. let me start. Go ahead, Tony. Wrap it up. Let me start talking right now. Can I, can I talk now? No. I was going to tell you, you know Tiger Woods. So he's going to have a whole line of clothes coming up. And I hear there are people interested in putting a line of Sherry's clothes up. Wouldn't that be something? Go ahead, Tony. Take it. Down goes Rage. That was good. Was Down that? goes Rage. Thank you, Dent. Would you stop? Knee the back by Chaos. And uh, this young duo getting their licks in here, Brain. And all the maneuvers they're throwing at you, they're throwing at you with authority. They're not laying back anymore. They're not young guys that are intimidated. You're not going to see that line of clothes on her. Confidence. You mean Tiger Woods' clothes on Sherry? No, no, no. I mean, that great athlete, Tiger Woods, great golfer, has his own line of clothes. Why shouldn't she have something in, like, vinyl? Yeah. Today, you've got black vinyl, and tomorrow, you've got black leather. Then black sequins. Holy smokes. What are you talking about? Well, styles she no change. more needs a line of clothes than I do. Oh, great move that time. And a cover. One only. Keeps the Naga Hunters busy. You think he's coming to my mind, you know. I'm the brain. You're the brain. You certainly are. Here's a double team, and now the former tag team champs getting uh, on track here, Brain. You know, talking about tag team wrestling. How do you think the team of Piper and Flair are going to cohabitate with their egos and knowing the propaganda that the NWO is trying to garbage up? I think they'll be very successful. I think anytime you underestimate two of the biggest superstars in the history of our sport, like those two, you're making a big mistake. And imagine this. What? What history would be made if Ric Flair and Rowdy Roddy Piper became World Tag Team Champions? Be awesome, wouldn't it? Oh, think of that. Good maneuver. Oh! Standing sidekick, or as they call it, the Harlem sidekick. And that was awesome. One, two. But the young man, Chaos, kicks away. I didn't think he'd be getting up. I didn't either. I didn't think he'd be getting up with help. I mean, he took his head off with that move. It's uh, one of the premier moves from Booker T. There's another warning by Patrick. And I'll tell you something about the Steiner brothers and also Harlem Heat and also Flair and Piper. They'll wrestle anybody. But Harlem Heat and the Steiners, they've, they've had some tough matches with other opponents. They've gone through everybody, and they haven't backed down from one challenge. They have fought constantly since they come into WCW. Now Rage is trying to maybe slow this thing to a halt, grinding down here, pulling on the arm, pulling back. See, now you had the man face down, you had a good hold on him, you had him, you had him going no place. Now was your time to get your wind back, get a little rest, keep him on the ground, keep him on that mat, make him breathe heavy. But that all will come with experience. And if it don't, then there'll never be anything. In the corner, and this is the double team maneuver that all great tag teams use. Exchange in and out, tag, quick tags here. You know where tag team wrestling started? Why don't you enlighten me, Brian? Australia. Australian tag team rules, right? No, Polish tag team rules in Australia, of course. No, Australian tag team rules. Okay. You ever wrestle a kangaroo? I've never wrestled anyone. Anything. So there. And Nick Patrick with a warning here, and I think what we're seeing here is a good attempt by this young duo of double teaming, but they're a little bit now, I think they've kind of got oh. lost here, a little bit one step removed, not as smooth as they should be. Well, what happened was Harlem Heat went out there and they just took, him, took it to him right from the beginning and just threw their game plan off. Most good teams always have two game plans and a third one in the wing.
just to protect your uh, tail, if you know what I mean. Oh, really? Yeah, so you always know what, when you go in there what you like to do to your opponents. If that don't work, you got another plan. If that fails, you're in real deep trouble. Use the third plan, which is usually bail out or, or have some added help if you need it. When you were managing, your game plans were cheat, and if that doesn't work, cheat some more. If that doesn't work, run. Bribe them. Run. Or bribe them. There you go. Forearm shot, fist to the face, and here is Stevie Ray. Scoop slam with a big guy. All right, let me eat. Stevie Ray dominating now. Oh, foot to the face. That was on target. And Rage spills on the near side. Up. It's time for the big apple. Oh. He won't be getting up. Today. That's why they're top contenders. I don't know what it is. Call them number one contender. Call them number two contender. What is the matter? But don't call them right. Nope. I told you I was going to knock somebody out. Dominating win by Harlem Go ahead, Frank. Are they trying to, trying to quit smoking, wearing those things on their nose? No. You know better than that. Would you please get to the replay? Go ahead. Harlem Heat spinning to his tire, going ahead. Spinning to his feet. Knocking Chaos right off his feet. Shoot some in. This is about the beginning of the end here for Chaos. Look at this. Look at the height. How high he gets up there. Wax him right across the yap. Your winner, Harlem Heat. The big win. And Harlem Heat, who are the number one contenders for the World Tag Team title? An issue that's soon to be settled very, very soon. But, Brian, now let's take a look at next week's program. WCW Worldwide Wrestling comes your way next week. Chris Iakea will be with us in singles competition. And two of the brightest guys walking the street. <laughs> Steiner. <laughs> They'll be with us in tag team action. Jeff Jarrett and the lovely Deborah will be here as well next week, Rain. And the female heartthrob at WCW, Chris Jericho, will be here. He's called the line for the brain and Tony Schiavone. See you next week on Worldwide Wrestling. See you Well, you see the Prince now right now. Prince Iakea is going to be here. You messed it up already. It's Prince Iakea. Close enough. And there are the Canadians. And there's Rey Mysterio Jr. Just a minute. I can tell you. The public enemy will be with us. Now, wait a minute. You've lost your job, fella. And Chris Jericho, next. All right, Brain, I'm sorry. We'll let you talk right now. Welcome to Worldwide Wrestling on this Great American Bash weekend. This Sunday, the pay-per-view spectacular, Savage Page 2, the main event notice qualification. And, as we've talked about before, you never know when Sting is going to show up in w WCW. Talk, please. You're right about that. Thank you for allowing me to speak, Mr. Shivani. No, you're right. You don't know where Sting's going to be. But you know wherever Hogan is, that's where Sting's going to be. Now, I don't know where Hogan's going to be, but Sting is tracking him. So if you see Hogan, if you see any members of the NWO, there's a good chance that man... Sting will be coming from the ceiling, or coming from the sewers, or coming from a doorway. You gotta keep your eyes, out. You, you gotta look. Well, Too many things can happen to us. Okay, I will, we'll do some looking at fans. Before we do that, stay out of there please. Let's go to the ring on Worldwide Wrestling. We began with some great singles action this week on Worldwide Wrestling. Great crowd on hand for the superstars of WCW. Now Tony, how do you pronounce this Joker's name? Well, first of all, he's not a Joker. He's a former television champ. It's pronounced Iakea. Iakea. Not Iakeu. Iakea. Or Iakea. Iakea. You know, in the Polynesian alphabet, there's only like four letters. <laughs> it's all hard. L's, M's, and a U. It's not hard to mess up a name I like that. Iakea. It's an I chart. There you saw it right there. Jerry Flynn. You Flynn, pronounce? I can get. Yeah. Flynn is how you pronounce his last name. The opening bout here. And Scott Dickinson, the referee, you're looking at two fine young athletes in our sport. Later on this telecast, we'll be talking more about the big event this Sunday, the Great American Bash. And Savage Page 2, the whole world waiting for that one, Brain. Well, you know, their first encounter, you saw what happened. Randy Macho Man Savage had to use crutches for a couple weeks, had ligament damage to his leg. He saw Diamond Dallas Page had to go in for acupuncture. His whole back shoulder was all tore apart. I mean, they went at each other. Oh! And uh, Diamond Dallas and Savage 2 should be all it's cranked up to be. 
Outstanding back kick that time by Flynn. Now drives the knee to the top of the head. Flynn, uh, well-schooled in the martial arts. A kickboxing expert is what he is. Look at oh! That. Well, he rocked his little ponytail, didn't he? Yeah. You know exactly what island the prince is from. One, two. It's not like Manhattan Island, somewhere around no. the Bronx, is it? I think he may be from Tonga. In the rope, the prince over the top. Oh, boy! Or that other island, just a little south of Tahiti. Uh, come on and get off here and go fishing or something like that. It's not that far, but... It's all alike, you know, they're all just trees, sand, and flies, you know. Whatever. Uh, Prince going in with reckless abandon that time and a running lariat by Jerry Flynn. See, now Flynn shouldn't waste his time here right now. This man, Ayakea, is a former television champion. It'd be beneficial to Flynn to get a quick victory over this guy as soon as he can. That would help his uh, credential a lot. Spinning, standing, side kick that time. Forget the referee, Flynn. He, he, you can beat him all day long. It won't matter. Stay on the Prince. Back leg front kicks are on target here. Very tight-knit family the Prince is from, you know. Really? Oh, yeah, they named him after their dog. Backhand chop by Prince Iakea. You know his other brother, Rex? His stop. sister, Spot? You stop. Great American Bash this Sunday. They can bring in the paper in the morning. Nine, Funniest thing you've ever seen. Shut up, please. Nine big matches for you exclusively on pay-per-view. And Ric Flair and Rowdy Roddy Piper and a chance to go after the World Tag Team Championship. But you know, the Hall and Nash Outsiders, they're not going to make it into a regular match. They're not going to risk their title being on the line for anything like that. They've got a master plan. Bischoff's behind it. Hogan's behind it. Everybody in the NWO's behind it. Something big's going to happen at this pay-per-view. It's going to be a big one. At the Mark of the Quad in Moline, Illinois, here's a... Two count that time, and I tell you, as our fans look on, Flynn looks in pretty good shape here. There's Iakea firing back, rebounding. There's a great lariat of his own. That one took the big guy up off the mat. Looks like he's a little frustrated, like he's tried everything on the prince and just he just can't get a game plan down. Oh! Version of the Samoan drop from the far ropes. It's like a cheap ride at a fair. Drop kick. The Prince. This is where he lived. This is his element right here, Brain. Cross body one. Two, three. How about that, Bobby the Brain? Well, so much for Mr. Flynn. He had an opportunity there on a few occasions. Didn't capitalize on it. This man's back on his winning streak. The Prince here. He wants to regain that television title, U.S. title, world title, tag title, any title he can get his hands on. That's where you make the money. Let's get another look at it here. Prince shoots and Flynn. Beautiful move here. Could have had the man, I would have thought. Knocked all the wind out of him. Prince going to that top rope. Sets himself. He's ready. Swan dive. Look at the hang time on this man. And there he is. Your winner, Prince Iapuku. Ayakea. Well, Next, the amazing French Canadians and more WCW action on Worldwide Wrestling. This portion of WCW Worldwide Wrestling is brought to you by Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know use Valvoline. Worldwide Wrestling on this great American Bash weekend. Summer is here. You know, the summertime, you think about cookouts, picnics. Outings, going out with your family vacation? Not me. Well, I'm sure you don't. If you think about the great American band to celebrate the summertime fun this Sunday. And I wanted to make sure I talked a lot about the United States, America, when the Canadians were coming out here. Well, I hope we're in for a treat. I hope they graced us with their singing. Are you kidding me? No, I'm really. You, you gotta listen. You may have a tin ear, Tony. Maybe you don't know. These guys got some talent. These guys got some talent. The Claude Rains of WCW. Who else do you like? What other music do you like? If you like these guys. Oh, there's a lot of great groups out there. Oh, really? Their opponents. 
the young duo of High Voltage making their way here to the ring. Now this would be a great, great win for High Voltage if they can do it. They need a win like this to shoot them right back up there and take team competition. Here they come, High Voltage. Like I said, they're only a couple wins away from being major, major stars in this sport. They're young, they're in great shape, and they're nuts. Oh, yeah. And you like it, don't you? you like yeah. It? I mean, hey, when you think of nuts, who do you think about? Macho Man Randy Savage? Yes, definitely. Definitely the head cashew. So Ty Voltic, the amazing French Canadian, this is a big, important match for them. I think they're going to grace us, Tony. I think we're lucky enough. Oh, are we lucky people? Hit it! Boy, I would agree with that. I can name that in ten notes. Holy Moses, the Touch all the bases. You just hit a home run for us. I mean, even Sinatra couldn't sing with millions and millions of people booing you. Let's remind the fans that you can join us for the Great American Bash this Sunday by calling your local cable operator and making sure you make the appropriate phone call and order the Great American Bash exclusively on pay-per-view. Available on satellite dish, of course, or the mini dish. Don't miss the Great American Bash this coming Sunday, the 15th of June, exclusively on pay-per-view from your friends at World Championship Wrestling. Colonel, give him the orders. You're the man in charge. Well, this is a big man here. Oh, boy, I tell you, Paul Willett, one of the most agile 300-plus pound men you'll find. Pick up. Dropped him on the back of his head, and that was nicely done. You know, they wanted him to play pro hockey. He refused. He says it's a sissy sport. Too many pads you have to wear. Oh, for Christ. I don't believe that. That's what he told me. Whoa, great maneuver that time. Cover one, two. Got a two count, and Rougeau now takes one in the head from Rage. Now Chaos working on Willette. Pick up. Now, who's the legal man? Well, I think it's chaos. I think it's rage. When you go in there, you be ready. I'm going to throw you this flag and you use it. You ready. hear that? Yes, we did. Did you hear that? Going to throw him the flag and... And you use it. You don't hear this stuff anyplace else. This How about is... that? Oh! Flying body attack from the top cover. Rage. There's the flag. There's the flag. Plant it. Oh! How about that little eavesdropping? And a cover. One, two, three. Oh, Canada. Well, they sing better than you. That wasn't me singing. That's the truck. The truck thing. The amazing French Canadians use the flag to their benefit and win on worldwide wrestling. Still to come, the sensational Ray Mysterio Jr. plus a lot more. Right now, worldwide on the Great American mm -hmm. Bash weekend. Me, 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 me. Please listen to this. <laughs> the Great American Bash this Sunday. Big event. Nine matches. It's going to be awesome. Ric Flair, Rowdy, Roddy, Piper together. Two of the legendary figures in the sport, two of the top superstars of all time, and a chance to become World Tag Team Champ, Frank. There's a tough, tough man right there, Bob Eaton, from Huntsville, Alabama. Nice hairdo on those ladies. Would you leave our fans alone? Grand Ole Opry's in town, huh? Stop. Bob Eaton and Johnny Swinger. In this one-on-one -on -one matchup. 
I like this Johnny Slinger, cocky. You know, I like a guy's attitude like that. New in the sport, you want to know, we want everybody to know just who you are. Doesn't always work for a lot of people, but if it's built in and you're naturally cocky, it can't hurt you. Neutral position, they're back into the corner. And Johnny Swinger now trying to get an early advantage. How about this? Being very aggressive here, Brain. Boy, and he got by beaten down real quick. If he, stay, if he stays on him, he can maybe have a big, big upset right here. Good slam pickup, put him down hard. But this Eaton's a very, very hard man to beat. You know, he knows probably more about tag team wrestling than anybody, him and Arn Anderson. Well, power slam. And he's one tough customer. He can punch you real short, real quick, and you're out for days. Oh. Brain, what in the world do you think it's going to be like this Sunday when the Macho Man and Diamond Dallas collide? Savage page two, this time no disqualification. It's going to be nothing less than wild. Well, if you want to see a wrestling match and you want to see a man match his skills against another man's skills, if you want to see hold versus hold, I suggest maybe you tune into some kid's show on television. If you want to see a fight and maybe somebody's going to be missing body parts, that's what you're going to see because Savage, all Savage can care about is his reputation now. And all Diamond Dallas Page wants to do is get his hands on the Macho Man for what they did to Kimberly, his wife. It's going to be electric. I mean, Savage pulled some of her hair out, he said. Uh, uh, I'd rather not discuss that part of it. Right now, Swinger being manhandled back to the corner. Bobby Eaton sends him in. Trying to hip toss. Fans are loving this one. I tell you, pick up. How about that? Hit scissors take down. See, but he turns his back. When you get a man like Eaton now with a combination like that, pal, take advantage of it. We see that a lot in our sport, don't we? I mean, they just... Showboat. Showboat, yeah. Well, the fans are so loud and they scream so much and they're so noisy. Sometimes you're trying to tell them just keep it down a bit. you got to gather your thoughts. They keep getting louder here. Listen to them. Head first. Sometimes on night show, I can't hear for days afterwards. Did you know that? What? Huh? Well, they're chanting here tonight. They love... What? Would you stop? They love Bobby Eaton. Yes, they do love me. Bobby Eaton. Eaton, he's in the ring. Yes, he is. Johnny Swinger knows it. Well as anyone. Eaton has an arm bar. Look at the leverage, the vertical base. Pushing down. Bobby, Bobby is the champ. Right? Well, they always do that for me. No, they they say weasel when you're around. Those are the ignorant ones. And you know the NWO is going to be in the building at the pay-per-view, so hey, right there. You know who may be in the building? Not Sting. This Sunday, the Great American Man. Well, he says if any place Hogan is, he's going to be. And you know what the importance of this match in the NWO, I wouldn't doubt if Hollywood was there. Right. He'll never tell anybody his plans or travel arrangements. He'll even tell his own people. Uh, he yeah. don't trust anyone. Yeah, if I knew Sting was chasing me, I wouldn't let anybody know where I was going either. Pick up. Oh. Straight backbreaker by Bobby. Just floated him right over to his knee. I think he's going to go for the Alabama Jam. Scoop slam, pointed up top. I got some great friends at the University of Alabama. You do? Oh, yes. Up on top. Oh! That wasn't a jam, but that was close. That'll work. One, two, three. <laughs> Bobby with a high-risk maneuver gets a big win on WCW Worldwide Wrestling. Fans love it. They're into this one. And Bobby Eaton to celebrate some big win. The fans still to come, Rey Mysterio Jr., Chris Jericho in our main event. But right now, though, this is a big moment for us. This is great to have Rey Mysterio Jr. on WCW Worldwide Wrestling. The fans in uh, Southern California following his career. Well, he's going to be on the big card out there at the Great Western Forum on the 28th of June. Yes, he is. As a matter of fact, that's in a couple of weeks. Oh, fans. that kid lost weight. And our, you stop. Sure, he used to fit him snug. Our, our fans are coming out of the Great Western Forum. You know, Brain, we're all going to be out there. You're going to be there. I'm going to be there. That's right. We're going to try to prevent Lee Marshall from coming in the building, but that's a hard thing to do. Uh, Mike Tanay is going to be there. So uh, there's Dave Heath.
And uh, so we look forward to seeing all of our fans on a Saturday night, the 20th Tony, of look, June. Look at the size difference here. Of course, he always gives away a lot of Mysterio. Fans, we want to remind you that the Great American Mash pay-per-view is this Sunday. The event will originate from Moline, Illinois, at the Mark of the Quad. But the only way you can see this event is by making the appropriate telephone call right now. Call your local cable operator, satellite dish, or mini dish provider, and join us for the Great American Bash. Ric Flair, Piper, together against Hall and Nash. Say, Savage Page, Part 2, and much more. The Great American Bash, this Sunday, the 15th of June, and only on pay-per-view. I would say this guy's about a head and a half bigger than Mysterio. Maybe 100 pounds Whoa. heavier, too. Mysterio, that was a great move, but he couldn't get back to his feet. Oh! Big, big man, whoever he is. Look at Mysterio. Agility, shoulder block. But you know, he's got experience, Mysterio. Oh, yes, he does. And he'll take any kind of a oh. chance. And he took one right there, Brain. Oh! Oh my, oh my goodness! My. That that probably should be a disqualification. Did he throw him over the top rope? I think he lost and he slipped off. I'll tell you this, Mysterio's taken a beating over since the time he's been here at WCW. Probably had more ice on him than a... Well, then you know what. Then a chilled bottle of wine. No, I was thinking more of a... a Zamboni. <laughs> A pickup. Yeah, this guy, Heath is using his uh, size advantage. And he's, he's having a good match here. He is right. So he's holding back a little here. You can't hold back with that guy, Mysterio. Oh, boy. The bottom rope catapult that time. Uh, nice. Cover one, two. Sound effects supplied by the brain. That's what he's saying. How long is it going to take you to come from your estate in Beverly Hills to the Great Western Forum in Inglewood on the 28th? Would you stop by the hotel and pick me up in your limousine? <laughs> Tony, Tony, there's no CAB written on the side of my car, pal. You're going to have to get to your best way. You see that thumb you got there? Yeah. Put it out in the curb. See this, what happened. This thumb right here? The longest thumb I've ever seen. Look at our great fans on hand on WCW Worldwide Wrestling. Rey Mysterio has had the fight from behind here. And he's doing it again. And he'll fight you, no doubt about that. Mysterio. There's a lot of fight in that package there, pal. Well, you're not kidding. Where it comes from, I don't know. But a running lariat. You know, the Heath, with a little more preparation, he could have had this match. I bet if he'd have known who his opponent was and prepared for it, because he's a big guy and he's taking it to him. Yeah, he's wrestled a good match here, but he's, he's been, oh! as you said, for a little boy. As you said, Brain, very methodical. You don't want to be too methodical with a guy like this. Now, you don't want to go up there or let Mysterio get up there. He's so quick. Wasting his time a little much. That's going to change this match around. To change your weekend around. Up on top is Mysterio. Oh. One, two, he three. He got him. Talk to him later. And as we look at our fans appreciating what happened there, we go to the brain for our replay. Syria goes up here on top. His opponent, Mr. He, turns around, takes him off over that top rope. Crash landing he didn't want to take. 
referee position for the one, two, three count. Your winner, Ray Mysterio Jr. Still to come, Public Enemy and Tag Team Action and Chris Jericho La Parca. Right now, let's go to this. It's time for tag team action on Worldwide Wrestling, and this Sunday at the Great American Bash, the World Tag Team Championship will be on the line. And let's not forget now, we've been talking a lot about the great matches. Steve Mongo, McMichael, and Kevin Green, one-on-one. -on -one. That'll be interesting. Wow, interesting. It's going to be exciting. An old football What's that smell? No. Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah, fuck out, fuck. An old football rivalry rekindled between two of the greats. Kevin Green and Steve Mongo McMichael. And Hugh Morris and Conan. Who's the speller here with uh, Punk Out Buck? Hack Myers. Hack Myers. Yeah. You know his brother Oscar? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't either. Obviously, some hotel's missing a shower curtain. She's got it on. Here they come. Public enemy. And they'll party all night long. Well, here they come, and uh, Brain, they have the uh, table with them. They do have a table. You know, uh, we have been seeing over the past, oh, I guess about two months now, referees in WCW allowing public enemy to use the table in the ring. And I, I can only wonder the advent of James J. Dillon, even though he was severely beaten recently by the Macho Man Randy Savage, if in fact that J.J. is going to look at this and uh, outside the ring after the match is one thing. And there you see the even X marks the spot. Kind of the bullseye. That's right. But using it in the ring to win the match is another deal altogether. I'm not so sure I agree with that. Well, you know, the way things are here now in 1977, People are getting away with everything. They're getting away with... Did you say 1977? Yes. That was 20 years ago. 1997, you I said. said 77. I just want to see if you were on okay. guard. Okay, I am on guard. See if you knew where you were. Go ahead. Okay. Yankees you still got a Yan monkey's album. That's not my problem. The Yankees beat the Dodgers in the World Series. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That was 1977. Crying out loud. Well, it's like the strike zone in baseball is shrinking. They're kind of changing things around. And uh, same thing here. I mean, a table in the ring five years ago was not allowed. No. But now how are you going to stop some of these guys? NWO, they don't care. They'll do whatever they want. So they're, they're, they're kind of backing off. They're letting WCW guys kind of get away with stuff, too. You have to. If you tie our hands, the NWA, what are they, NWO, what are they going to do? Take advantage of it. Left hand by Hack Myers. This man has come to fight here. Well, he hasn't come for a haircut. He's got a great one of those. And Johnny Grimes, a fighter as well. Iron White right back on the man. Here's Bunkhouse Buck, I tell you. Good tag team work here. Yes, it is. And holds him in the front face lock, makes the tag, holds the man's arm up. Speaking of great tag teams, the dispute continues and will be settled at the Great American Match this Sunday between the Steiners and Harlem Heat. Winner of the match will be the number one contender of the World Tag Team title and will face the winner of Flair Piper versus the Outsiders at our August pay-per-view extravaganza from Sturgis, South Dakota, Hog Wild. They just keep on coming, don't they? They sure do. One right after the other. Up on top. Oh, good maneuver by Grunt. Heck, Meyer's a big guy. Grimes, though, needs to make a tag. Rock a rock. Pounding away on the top turnbuckle. Right of your screen. And I saw Grimes like night getting out of a cab. Same way. No, you didn't. Here's Rocco. Right hand. Buck. A right cross to the gut. You don't want to mess punches with Buck, though. No, you're right, Brain. Pair of scoop slams there. Double team. Goodbye, Buck. He is still down. Hack Myers in. Midsection. I got a hunch Mr. Myers is going to be feeling some lumber pretty soon. Version of the DDT. The fans are calling for the table. 
And here it comes again. Once again, the rules being stretched, rewritten, if you will, because, I guess because it's what the fans want to see, right? The only thing I can come up with, let them do it. Let them have some fun. Well, if you think about it, they are not really hitting them with the table. Oh, no, they're just going through the table yeah, with okay. a man on their back. Oh, 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 nothing wrong with that, Tony. Pin him on the table. The table Wake up. obviously has become an extension of the ring. Not only can you use it, you can pin the man on it. With the referee job, wake up if you can. You just went through a table. Courtesy of public enemy. Now where are they going? They're going to celebrate or they're going to potty with their fans in the stands here at Universal Studios, Florida. Now we go to Bobby the Brain Heenan who will say bad things and rip on the fans. Go ahead, Brain. Don't say anything bad about the fans. Fans look to me like they're having a pretty good time. Very young couple, though, by the way, but it's like they're having a good time. It's a kid's head crooked or his hat. But I didn't say that. Oh, there's a lot of people. There's going to be the rhythm section there, huh? Yeah, I must invite all these people to my home for a party. Especially that big woman on the end. She's good to have a party, so she's better to have a picnic. Keep the flies off the food. I apologize on behalf of WCW for the comments made by... Oh, she charges a haunt of small home. Will you stop Bobby the Brain Heater? Back with our main event after this. Time out on Worldwide. This portion of WCW Worldwide Wrestling is brought to you by Motel 6. The new Motel 6 is renovating across America. Call 1-800-4-MOTEL-6 for reservations. Main event time on Worldwide Wrestling. This Great American Bash weekend. This should be one of your last opportunities to call us and join us for the big event. Call your local cable operator, satellite dish, mini dish provider. And join us for the Great American Bash, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, live and exclusively on pay-per-view. Top to bottom brain, nine gigantic matches signed. Me and Chris Benoit return death match. Wrath and Glacier again. Conan and Hugh Morris, former tag team partners collide. We talked a lot about Green and McMichael and Paul and Nash against Piper and Flair. And of course, the world on edge for the notice qualification return match. Savage Age 2. And we don't know if Sting's going to be in the house. If Hogan's in the house, Sting will be in the house. We don't know yet about Hogan, but all could break loose. We look forward to bringing you this event this Sunday as part of WCW Summertime Fun. It's going to be a summertime of the Great American Bash. In July, Bash at the Beach. In August, called Wild. And you know, around September, I just may bash in your head. Well, you bash it in every week right on this program. Which you do. I don't really bash people, Tony. I just get my point across in a different way. La Parca did, did not waste any time running Larry at that time. And there you see Nick Patrick with the referee assigned for this one. La Parca, big high attack. Oh! Shoulder block, take down. They say he may be the best looking man in wrestling, Chris Jericho. Good maneuver. Arm drag kick down. Again. Oh! Cover after that standing side kick and a two count. Jericho needs a haircut. I happen to know that the young ladies like that hair on Chris Jericho. Sure, they look at Bauer's ribbons in his beret. No, they look like that. Chris Jericho is a fine young man. What makes you think so? I know Chris. I've had, I've had a chance to spend a few few hours what? with him, talking oh. to him on the road. He's a great young man. Dedicated, I know, to the sport. Intense competitor. Here is a champion of the future right here, fans. But that hair is going to... It's gonna cost him a lot of matches. Somebody's gonna Oh! Drop the right in his neck. What about when Ric Flair 10, 20 years ago had that long hair and was world champion? No one said all oh, the hair is gonna cost him some matches. It never did. Well, but Flair had a different style. Flair had a different style. This guy he tries to make everybody happy. Oh. Right in the face. Tries to make the fans happy. 
Smart move here, though. Couldn't shake the cobwebs in the ring, so he got out. I'm going to walk this one off a bit. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Suicide dive. And La Parca hit his knee as he went out. And Jericho in a lot of pain, as you can see. And Nick Patrick may just throw this match out. I don't think he can get back in the ring, uh, La Parca. Nick will go back in the ring and administer a 10 count. We may have a double count out here. Two. Three. We can count. Five. Seven. Back in at seven. Thank you. One, two. Got a two count. So they did make it back. And let's hear for perseverance and determination on both competitors here. That was a nasty spill from both men. Pick up a powerbomb. Oh, my. Look at the time La Park is waiting here. Look at the time he's wasting. Covers him, man. No, sir. Jericho left shoulder got up in the nick of time. I imagine it'd be hard to breathe in a mask like that. Of course, they're used to it. Wears it every day. Shoulder block. Up, rolls forward. Sunset flip two only that time. Jericho blocked it. Again. Jericho can punch. He sure can. Fix him up. Oh, my goodness. One, two. No, sir. Jericho up and down. See, too much time, too much time wasted by Lapaka. He should have dropped a couple elbows, put a couple boosts to him, then go up. Keep the man positioned. Don't let him move. Missed the spinning body attack. I don't think Lapaka's going to be able to get up real quick from this one. Missed Jericho drop kick. Took his time. One, two, three. The Great American Bash is this Sunday. We'll see you there, Brian. No doubt about it. What a what a pay-per-view it's going to be. Tremendous. And fans, on behalf of Bobby the Brain here, I'm Tony Schiavone. See you next week on Worldwide Wrestling. It's time for Worldwide Wrestling from Universal Studios in Florida this week. Alex Ray will be with us in singles competition. He's got a new change of attitude, and Ray Mysterio Jr. is here. Speaking of attitudes, how about Steve Regal? Don't call him Steven anymore. And the Ice Man, the man of a thousand holes, Steve Malico, is here. In our main event against Chris Jericho, it's all next. And welcome to Worldwide Wrestling, along with the brain, Bobby Heenan, and I'm Cody Schiavone. And what about the duo coming to Bash of the Beach on the 13th of July? The duo I'm talking about, Hollywood Hulk Hogan and the worm Dennis Rodman of the NWO. Now, you've seen Rodman participate in sporting activities. You've seen how he's gotten up in everybody's face and how everybody's intimidated by the guy. Right. That's what he's going to do. That's what Hogan wants. Hogan wants a guy like Rodman to get up in the face of a Luger, of a giant, to intimidate him. So then Hogan can sneak in through the side door and do his dirty damage. Hogan, you're a smart man, but you're not that smart. you got the wrong partner. Always oh, surrounds himself with henchmen, doesn't he? Yep. To what? Thank you. To watch his back. Great program, including Dean Malenko on our main event against Chris Jericho. Let's go to the ring. The opening bout this week from Universal Studios, Florida, on Worldwide Wrestling. And now we go inside the arena brain for some great World Championship Wrestling action. And you know, you mentioned uh, right at the top of our program about the new attitude. We're going to be seeing the new attitude here in just a second. But right now. Great cruiserweight Billy Kidman making his way to the ring. This kid Billy Kidman's going to be a a good hand someday. He's going to be a good star if he watches himself. He does a lot of high risk moves. He could get hurt. That is what propelled him to be one of the top cruiserweights in the world. And you're right. It may not be too long down the road before Billy Kidman is a cruiserweight champ. Now here comes the man with that brand new attitude. A man I've always liked. Oh, you. Give me a break. You've never liked Alex Wright. Are you kidding? The Wonderkin? I've always admired this man's ability. And can he dance? How many people can get in one shirt, do you think? Alex Wright. 
back to dancing again and getting the booze of the fans as well. Really, everybody here's got two left feet. They're jealous. Alex Wright really loving himself. There is no question about that. And here he goes against Billy Kidman. I'll tell you what I like about Alex Wright. Oh. He, he gets... came here from Germany. He was humble. He was a nice kid. Everyone right. liked him. Didn't do him any good. They took advantage of him. He realizes the American way here. You've got to take what you want in this country because no one's going to give you anything. Well, that's true. You've got to go after oh. what you want, but there are certain parameters that a, a good person should follow, and he's not following those right now. You're right, Tony, and a good person will always come and last. You think so? I know so. I have relatives that are good people. And they're last? The last on my list. Alex you know what Alex picks up. Billy Kidman, a big power bomb. One, two, almost won it. And you know, Tony, Alex Wright... He also possesses a lot of wrestling ability. Yes, he does. Plus, with the high aerial maneuvers he can do, the right person behind him. This guy can make you uh, make himself a lot of money. Great elevation on that jump by Billy Kidman. Jump right over top of Alex and almost got a win that time. Right back to the attack once again. Sends him on the outside. Go out. Go ahead. I don't know what caused this. I mean, you say it's the education. You say the man is growing up, but I'm not so sure it's that becoming mature or maybe there was one instance one event that changed Alex Wright I'm not so sure what happened but you came tonight being very aggressive here Brain. well I'll tell you what it is and I've heard from other people that when this man goes on an airplane wonder punk how about that go ahead where did they pick up that uh when he gets on a plane up from you not, not from me go ahead, but we'll when he gets on an airplane or goes to a hotel or goes to a restaurant or goes to a club they always treat him as a second-rate citizen because he's not an american and he's told other people that he feels slighted so he says for me to get respect here i'm going to have to act like an american i will be rude i will be abusive and i will do what i want to do because it seems that's what gets by in this world here works for the nwo it must work for him amazing turnaround amazing change but he is still the great wrestler that we've come to know. Pick up of Billy Kidman. Kidman, great counter maneuver. Pull it down with a great arm drag. And look at that drop kick, if you will. Put the brakes on, Alex. Time to put the wagons in a circle. Kidman will send him to the neutral court. Oh, boy. Get chest, face first. That time, Billy Kidman. Running away. Kidman's wasting a little too much time here, showboating. It's good to knock a man down. It's good to feel the desperations of him. Don't look at those blank-faced humanoids and ask them for approval. You've got to win this match. Oh, boy. Oh. German suplex, one, two, three. He handled Mr. Kidman with kid gloves. Oh, look at this. Using the German suplex, the bridge gets the pin. style now. I believe you are the one that started the Wonder Punk moniker. I would have never said anything like that about a man like that. Go ahead there, Brain. Alex Wright shoots Kidman in. Drops him with a big elbow. Kidman's in trouble here. German suplex from behind. And your winner, Doc Wonder uh, Kid, Alex Wright. Still to come, Rey Mysterio Jr. and more. But right now, fans, we'll take a break and back with more on Worldwide. This portion of WCW Worldwide Wrestling is brought to you by Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know use Valvoline. Welcome back, fans, to Worldwide Wrestling as we head now towards Bash of the Beach. The big date is the 13th of July. That is a Sunday night. The event will originate from Daytona Beach, Florida. And we know that Hulk Hogan, Hollywood Hulk Hogan, and the worm Dennis Rodman will be a tag team. The Giant and Lex Luger want that match. They deserve that match. But hopefully next week we'll get a confirmation on a signing of that match. Love to see it, wouldn't you, Brink? Hey, what does Sting say? Wherever Hogan is, 
he will be. That's right. So who knows what's going to happen. We saw earlier Billy Kidman, one of the top cruiserweights, go down to defeat at the hands of Alex Frank. And now, one of the greatest cruiserweights in the world, former champion over and over, Mr. Perseverance, Mr. Hot Determination, and the fans love him, the youngster Ray Mysterio Jr. from Mexico. Ray Mysterio Jr. from Mexico. Are you with me here? I know where he's from. I know his name. Why didn't you talk? Why didn't you I don't have to talk until something happens. You get paid to talk here. This is television. These humanoids can see. We don't have to tell them everything. Next we'll be talking in Braille. Juventud Guerrero, the opponent. Full arm drag and twist now, and he wants to start out slowly here, Brain. This will be a good match because they're both about the same uh, size, both same ability. Fans do not forget that Bash of the Beach on the 13th of July will be an exclusive pay-per-view event. Call your local cable operator right now and be a part of Bash at the Beach. Bash at the Beach, if you'll recall, one year ago was the event where Hulk Hogan became a part and created the name NWO. Remember that? We were all shocked. What will happen this year when Rodman, Dennis Rodman it is, and Hollywood Hulk Hogan are together? You'll find out Sunday, July 13th at Bash at the Beach. You know, Tony, watching Hooventude here and Mysterio, their moves are so fluid. And Chris, you can just tell they've done their homework. They, they know each other's style. Look at this. I'll tell you something about Dennis Rodman. Rodman's no slouch. The man's an athlete. He's six foot eight. He's what, 260? Oh, he's, he's tough. He's one oh, of the there's ever. no doubt about it. I mean, he goes into it. A lot of big guys that like to push him around, and he likes to let them think they push him around. This is... Hogan's got something in the back of his mind here that, that just may work. You know, you're right about that. But what's the motive here? Well, like you said at the top of the program, another man to do his dirty work, I guess. Hooventude missed completely that time. Sending Mysterio in. Has the sleeper. Or is that a sleeper? No, reverse chin lock applied. Mark Curtis checking to see if it choked hold and was not. Look at the long hair on Mysterio. Oh, that's Hooventude's hair. That's Hooventude. That was Mysterio trying to move it out of the way that time. But it was on Hooventude. Look at our great crowd, capacity crowd on hand. By the way, around the 13th of July, around July, let's say, 16th, 17th, and 18th, begins another two weeks of television tapings at Universal Studios Florida. So if you live in the Orlando area or if you're down at Universal Studios for a vacation starting July 16th, come on to the Worldwide Arena or the WCW Pro Arena where we tape our programs and be a part of all the action, all the fun like the fans are here, Brian. Oh, oh yeah, it's a happening. They line up early and it's a fun thing for everyone. In the ropes, except, pick up. Except oh. Hooventude. Wow. Or Mysterio. Not fun for Mysterio at all right now. Cover. Did not get it. But came pretty darn close. Uh, pretty darn close don't mean much. Pretty darn close. How many times have we said that in a Mysterio match? Almost got him. Almost got him. We say it so many times and still he rebounds to win. German suplex. Oh, boy. Moving to wanted to make sure. Oh. Almost got him again. Almost. Did not. Amazing, a versatile athlete is the youngster, Ray Mysterio Jr. Well, see, Tony, if you've been in the ring, you'll notice you would know. Look at, oh! I mean, you can tell the count. The referee will count one. He usually counts out loud, too. He hits his hand. He'll go one, two. After two, you know he's coming down to three. And you just got to get your shoulder up the best you can. Take as long as you can on that count. Sometimes you need the time. Complete missed that time again by Hooventude. Launch out, one, two, three. You know, if you think about all the things he has going for him, you are looking at a man with so much tenacity, perseverance, desire, heart. And not only that, he's one of the smallest That's ever to wrestle. Pino How about it? He is an incredible athlete. In Mexico. 
Si sí tenemos competencia, si sí sabemos luchar, eso fue para todos. Los... Rey Mysterio Jr. And the fans celebrate his win again here on Worldwide Wrestling. It's time for our Valvoline replay used by America's top mechanics. Well, here's something that should be used by a mechanic. The old Rey Mysterio off the top rope. Hook him upside down, take him over, hook the legs for the one, two, three. You'll get your car grease, you'll get your doors fixed, everything will happen. Except Hooventude, you run into some bad luck. People who know use Maveline, let's take you now to Lee Marshall. Fan support really means a lot to a lot of these professional wrestlers. For example, I think of competitors like Eddie Guerrero or Rey Mysterio Jr. Anywhere they go, they attract a huge amount of Latino fans. Likewise, it doesn't matter where we go. If there's a Canadian in town, they're going to show, uh, show up when either Chris Jericho or the amazing French Canadian show up. And then there's Ming, who hails from the island of Tonga. Let me bring him on in here. Wherever you go... It seems that a lot of the Tonganese, the Samoan people, the island people, they come from wherever they've got to come from just, just to watch you compete. That must make you feel pretty good. What are you good. trying to say? You're trying to say, Mr. Major, that uh, we are rowing the canoe all the way here? Well, no, I was just making a suggestion that you have a great deal of, of fan course. support. That's why we're so big like this, because we row the canoe all the way from the island. And let me tell you something. Everywhere we go, there's always a lot of Tongans there. Come on, you talk about the Fijian, Tahitian, mm -hmm. you name the whole South Pacific, the Hawaiians, they all are law there. What? They do what? You didn't get that? No, I didn't get the last part. But that's okay. As a matter of fact, this is a great opportunity for you to speak directly to the people of the islands about what it's like competing in the WCW. Well, it's a great honor mm -hmm. to compete in WCW. But the most of all is being with the Dungeon of Doom. Ah, yes. We always ready to any kind of action. Call us and we'll be there to take over on WCW, NWO, Four Horsemen, whoever you want to put in front of us, we're going to take care of them. Why is it that people refer to you as the monster? The monster? Yeah, they say the monster's turned loose. Turned loose? Yeah. Because they haven't seen a real wrestler step into that ring, but this man here, so is the Dungeon of Doom. When we talk about wrestling, we're getting there and to destroy it. I think I understand why they call him the monster. Well, Tonganese or not, Samoan or not, when this man's in town, buy a ticket. See the Dungeon of Doom. You're not going to be sorry. You'll see action. More action on Worldwide Wrestling. Good to have you with us wherever you are. And I'm right and here. I know where you are. I only have to listen to you. Hey, the rodeo's in town. Greg the Hammer Valentine. Hey, not too long ago on this program, this very program, picked up some wins. You gotta say the veterans back in the hot seat once again here, Brain. Would you be my Valentine? No. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Greg the Hammer Valentine. One tough individual. One of the greatest wrestlers ever. You know why they call him the hammer? Yes, I do. He pound on you all day long. One of the hardest hitters in our sport. And for Greg Valentine, here comes another hard hitter from Alabama. Bobby Eaton. One of the greatest right-hand punchers you'll ever find. So... But he's left-handed. No, right-handed. No, he's left-handed, but he punched with the right hand. Shows you how goofy he is. Who told you this story? Regal. You're... Oh, there you go. Stephen Regal told Stephen me Stephen Regal, who would lie to his grandmother, told you that story. No, he wouldn't lie to his grandma. He doesn't talk to her anymore. Why not? Hates her. Let's go to the match. Here we go. It's Valentine and Eaton. He said that was the trouble with Eaton. He said he wouldn't take command. He wouldn't listen. He wasn't obedient. That's what Regal told me. I'm not going to even get into that. Argument with you. Here's Valentine hitting the ropes and oh. a big elbow in the back of the neck. You know, Valentine, you call him the hammer, but let's talk about more than just that hammer sledge or sledgehammer forearm shot. He's got that big elbow drop of his. He uses that to win matches and look how he can put the hurting on you, stomping and kicking Bobby Eaton here. You know, he's very methodical too. He'll take his time with you. 
And the more you pound on the hammer, the more he likes it. The more he's into a match. You're not going to beat this man two, three, five, ten minutes. You're going to have a fight on your hands when you're in there with him. And uh, Greg Valentine, uh, Bobby Eaton tried to backslide that time, but he was too close to the rope. Greg Valentine, well-documented career, former member of the World Tag Team Champions over and over again with the Nature Boy Ric Flair as his partner. We're talking about in the early stages of his career. They started in the career together. Plus, world television champion, United States heavyweight champion, and many times top contender to the world heavyweight title. And he's wrestled all over the world. Yes, he has. Second generation, his father, Johnny Valentine, probably one of the toughest men ever to walk this earth. And one of the wildest, too, I understand. Pick up a Bobby Eaton, dropped him down. Yeah, he did have a, a good time every now and then. One. Uppercut by Bobby Eaton. Greg Valentine Whoa. trying to extend the elbow that time. But Bobby Eaton, here's what we're talking about. Those short right. Short right hands. The hammer reverses them. Bobby Eaton swinging neck breaker, one of his trademark maneuvers. Well, that'll pinch a nerve in your neck. Two, no, sir. Hammer kicks away. Oh. Pick up. He didn't get him good there. He dropped him on his side. He got him. He beat him. Greg Valentine covered Bobby Eaton and got a big win. And You know, for the veteran here, former champ, the win to mount on a big winning streak here in WCW. Well, that's one thing you want here at WCW. You want to get on a winning streak. That's when people look at you. That's when they take notice. And the hammer is making people look his way. Once again, Greg the Hammer shoves Bobby Eaton into the ropes, hits him with a high knee. He even slaps that headlock on him. Hammer just set him up for that. The big elbow, and you're a winner. The hammer. One, two, three. For the fanfare, the music means that Steven Regal, or Steve Regal, don't call him Lord anymore. Doesn't like that now. Doesn't like that. Not so sure he even likes Steven, but nevertheless. What are you going to call him? Spunky? No, we'll call, well, forget about it. I'm going to call him Steve Regal, okay? How's your marriage going, pal? That's what I thought. Oh, my goodness. Having problems with an NWO fan here. How about that, Brain? Well, Regal will get up in anybody's face and talk. He just he just hates Americans. Just really hates it here. But he likes the money. For the fourth time in his career, he is the television champion of the world. Steven Regal. To face another man from Great Britain, Doc Dean. A lot of intensity in Doc Dean. And here we go, Doc Dean and Stephen Regal from the neutral position. Dean knows Regal quite well, and of course, a win here by Dean would give him the television belt. See, now watch this. You're going to learn something here. You don't have to be six foot five, 350 pounds. You watch what this Doc Dean does. You watch the moves like Steven Regal, how they float out of move to move. They know what they're doing in there. Fans, let's remind you of Bash at the Beach, Sunday night, the 13th of July, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, and only on pay-per-view. Hulk Hogan, Hollywood Hulk Hogan, the world heavyweight champion, and the worm, Dennis Rodman, one of the top superstars in the sports world, will be together as a tag team. Lex Luger and the Giant have said, we want the match. Will they get it? We'll find out next week. In the meantime, join us Sunday, July 13th, all right now to be part of Bash of the Beach. Tony, what kind of a, a doc is Dean? I don't know. Is he like a psychiatrist? Is he like a Woden doc? I mean, like what? It's a nickname. Oh. Not really. It's like, you know... Like, it, like Gokerman, they call him Goofy. It's like a nickname. Yeah, but... For, oh, yeah, that's right. Or you, they call you the brain. Yeah. Yeah. And you, they call you... Shavani. <laughs> that, that was much kinder than I thought so, you'd so be. Well, I'm on the air now. 
I can't show you the gestures that go along with it. You'd never stopped you before. Look at those European uppercuts from the... Television. Okay, how's that? Hey, stop it. From Steven Regal here. Huh? Would you please get back to the match? A lot of anticipation for Banshee of the Beach, Rodman Hogan, together. Don't sell Rodman short now. I'm not. I mean, I'm not you, but I'm hoping that uh, the wrestlers here at WCW don't think he's just a, a big, tall, thin guy that can jump in the air. Uh-uh. He knows how to intimidate you. He's a tough guy. One of the best. He'll be with us. Sunday the 13th of July. Up and down. He may be out of his element a bit with wrestling, but with Hogan as his partner, and he knows how to bend the rules, this will be tremendous. Over the top, and down. One, no, other way, one, two, three. He got the doctor. Still the television champion, Steven Regal. He can do it all, I tell you, he can wrestle. Time for an open let's see. Let's go now to the window. In the dirty one scandal. Yeah, that's right. Dirty rotten scandal is what he is. Speaking of that movie, he told me about two months ago he was having dinner with Michael Caine, who did that movie, Dirty Rotten Scandal. Yeah. Put him on the phone, we shot the breeze for a while. What a nice guy. Well, there he is. Steven Regal. He gets the win, the one, two, three. Here's your winner still to come, Dean Malenko, Chris Jericho, and much more. Right now, we take you to our friend, Lee Marshall. Lee? Well, thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Lee Marshall, and I'm really, really pleased Eddie Guerrero has agreed to talk with us. I have some questions about, well, really, the personality. You asked me not to judge you. Don't judge a book by its cover. You've been misjudged, misquoted. Some things have gone on. You and Malenko, he hurt you, and now it appears that you're really determined to hurt him. But somewhere along the line, Eddie... Your personality has taken well, a pretty severe left turn, don't you think? You could say that. You could say a lot of things. Hey, apparently you've already judged me. Have you judged me? Go ahead. Judge me. We're just looking for honest answers. The point is, D. Malenko, I am not in a gray area no more. I'm in a dark area. And that dark area was brought out by you, my friend. See, I took your championship supposedly the cruiserweight it was my fault that you lost you had to blame it on somebody blame it on me well so you made all these excuses so i said no let me give him a shot at the u.s championship you know i know he's going to be a great opponent i know it's going to be a great match well you went a step overboard deed and you took you tore my pet so i've been sitting at home for four months waiting to get my chance to get my hands on you See, because you've made this very personal by doing this. See, because every time I look at my two girls when they want something, and I have to cut back on my finances because I can't work. See, you stepped into a very heavy area, Dean Malenko. When I look at my girls and I can't buy them the bike they want because I can't work, like I say once again, it just makes me mad. And all I want to do is just go over and punch you right in the face. Well, my friend... That opportunity is coming very fast, and I'm just thrilled to death about it. I can't wait, my friend, to go out and turn the lights off on you. telecast we saw some great cruiserweights like Billy Kidman, Ray Mysterio Jr. Hooven Duke Guerrero. We see some great heavyweights like Stephen Regal, Bobby Eaton, Greg Valentine, and still a comp Dean Malenko, former U.S. champ against Chris Jericho, but right now, Super Colo, one of the top cruiserweights from Mexico in action. And his hat and his glasses will never leave his head. And why do you think that is? You don't have an answer for that, No, Dave. no, no. I, 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 I think he just buys things that fit. Maybe so. Super Colo is going to face one of the toughest men in this sport. Any man will tell you that if you have a match with Buddy Lee Parker, you are in for a fight. Back to Mexico and I'll body back. 
Well, that was pretty uh, good vivid. plan for Mr. Cowell. Boy, he really does. He's coming in with a plan here. Buddy Lee Parker, Super Kalo, one on one. Is it Kalo or Kalo? It's Kalo. Who told you that? Le uh, actually, uh, Mike Tanay. Mike Tanay did. Yeah. After Super Kalo had been here for like four months, going under Kalo, he finally decides, well, it's Kalo. So, what do you do? I call him by his first name. Super? Poncho. Oh, would you please stop? Kalo sent in by Buddy Lee, tried a lariat, and another one. Kalo just so quick. Springboard middle rope, one, two count on a flying body press. And drop kick sends the man on the outside. Notice how Kalo, Poncho Kalo, floats through the air. He doesn't come off that top rope. Look at this. Look at that move. That's floating, huh? That's a nosedive is what that is from Super Kalo. Oh! The double axe handle on the top of the head. Let's go. Something fell out of Parker's pocket or something. Or an ear or something. <laughs> Wait, an ear fell off again? I don't know. Maybe so. Kalo is up on top again. So much quickness. Oh, boy. There oh. it goes. Now. It's pound time for Pancho. And... The sunglasses still didn't come off the head. The hat's still on. Unbelievable. And that was a major league Larry at that time, or clothesline, if you will, from Buddy Lee. And Buddy Lee now, since his victory, could be at hand here, Brain. Poncho doesn't know where he's at. He's it just is, staggering out there. It's super close, not Poncho. Buddy Lee, although assaulting the man on the outside, rolling Kolo in. Now he'll beat on you all day long, Buddy Lee. Scoop slam, down. And Buddy Lee with a cross face. Reverse chin lock applied here. I noticed no one ever goes for the Mexican wrestler's mask. They never try to take him off. I would try to take off the mask. That would throw them off their game plan. Well, I think most people who wrestle the Mexican stars have a respect for the tradition that that the mask stand for. Tony, if somebody's picking me up in the air and throwing my body around and they're punching me, I want to know who's doing it. Yeah, but okay, so what? You take the mask off. Is that going to win you the match? No. Well, you don't know you, now. You, no, wait a minute. You pull the mask off and you say, oh, there's there's a Mexican who I don't even know. No, but he you doesn't want to... put the wanna... mask back on, you keep wrestling. No, no, he doesn't want to be recognized. He's wearing that mask for a reason. Once you take that mask off him, that's like stripping him down. One, it's like taking his shoes two, off. Baloney. He's not going to be able to do it. Baloney. What happened if you went up to Clayton Moore and snapped that mask when he's sitting on the white horse with Pancho? I mean, uh, the guy from uh, Canada, Tano. Toronto, what's the Indian name? You know who I mean. You're talking about the Lone Ranger. Yeah, what you That's long man before off. I was born, okay? Let's get back to the match here. Okay, let's get to some current. You know Gabby Hayes? Yes, he's director of security for WCW. Uh, Doug Dillinger, I'm sorry. I can see where you get him confused, though. Gabby's got one more tooth. Into the midsection. In the midsection, that's where he has it. And a reversal. Oh! Kolo sent in. Oh! Up on top! Oh! Kolo with a great maneuver. Top rope punch up. Picks him up. Buddy Lee does not want to be here, but Kolo sent him down. Who does? Version of the Hurricanrana that time in one, two, three, got the win. Super Kalo. Super Pancho. Oh, brain. Nice vest. Every day with you is an adventure. Kalo gets a big win. Coming up next, Dean Malenko, Chris Jericho, and our main event on Worldwide Wrestling. This portion of WCW Worldwide Wrestling is brought to you by Motel 6. The new Motel 6 is renovating across America. Call 1-800-4-MOTEL-6 for reservations. Should be quite a matchup because we have two men who are top contenders to many titles. Television title, United States Championship, even Cruiserweight Championship. And here's a man. This, I would not want to take a match against the Iceman right now. Just lost to... Jeff Jarrett lost the United States Heavyweight Championship because of Eddie Guerrero. Because of Eddie Guerrero. 
And here's a man who stays focused, who when he loses a title and has something go wrong in his career, will pick up the intensity even more, which is a great thing for a wrestler to do. It's a great way to approach things. Not to sulk, not to cry, just go back at it harder. Dean Malenko and his opponent, Chris Jericho. And Jericho, a lot of intensity. And I've got the list of all the wrestlers that are going to be participating next week here, and I'll run it by you in a little bit. You mean our, our rundown for next week? Yes, I've got it all down here right now. I'm going to, I'll do it later. You want to do it by yourself? Yeah, I'll handle it. Don't worry. Okie dokie. We wait for that one, fans. Notice uh, Malenko hasn't shaved for a few days. Maybe a week, maybe a month. He's, he's not a happy man. No, he's not. But he's ready to go. Look at this. Aggressive already. Here we go. Jericho and Malenko. Very similar in their styles in that they like to take the fight to you. And they would as soon stay on the mat as they would go up high. They can do it all. Jericho, right now, though, very young in the formative years of his career. And you can better believe in the next five or six years, Chris Jericho is going to be a champ. Either that or win the Michelle Pfeiffer lookalike contest. Oh, no, not at all. Hammerlock applied here by Jericho. Jericho's father, Ted Irvine, great hockey player. <laughs> with the Kings, with he the Rangers. He wasn't a hockey player. I found out what he did. He delivered ice. He used to have a horse with a hat with the ears sticking out, and he used to deliver ice in Brooklyn. That's what he did. That's what I heard. Chris Jericho's father had his ears sticking out of his hat? No, his horse did, which he finally wound up marrying. What was his horse doing with Chris Jericho's father's hat? Didn't have one of his own. How do I know? Well, would you... Tom Bristol horse apply. can't go buy hats. Him. He was a hockey player. No, he delivered ice. Well, you can talk to Jericho about that, but I know very, on very good authority that his father was a hockey player. And Chris, great athlete, ducking low, rolled up, does Malenko. How about this? Oh, hip up in a handspring, cartwheel, and then Jericho gets the first blow back in. Maybe his dad did play hockey because no, I, don't, I had heard I don't want over to get the years that his friends used to call him the baby goon. So maybe he did. I don't want to get into this. Jericho! Oh! Good maneuver using the middle turnbuckle that time and propelling himself across the top rope of the floor. And the fans appreciate the abilities of the youngster, Lionheart Chris Jericho. Man's in tremendous shape. Yes, he is. Wrestlers are all in better shape now than they were 20 years ago, 10 years ago. One, two, and they have to be. Well, the conditioning, the schedules, That's I mean, right. uh, just with the workouts, the nutrition, I mean, everything is speeded up. The athlete is bigger today, faster and stronger. And the man that really started this modern era of wrestling, the super heavyweights. The big side, the size, the speed, everything was Hulk Hogan. And, you know, you can say what you want to about him, like him or not, and we all certainly do not. He really paved the way for wrestling in the modern era, don't you think? From Hulk Hogan? Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's no doubt about it. Know, because six, six, eight, three, 350, 325. You know, everybody came along and wanted a shot at that man. They wanted to knock that man off. A lot of people had a good opportunity to do it. But boy, Hogan was smart. He knew how to manipulate people. He hid behind the rules. For years, I've said this about the man. Told you what a piece of slime the guy is. Nobody believed me. Now everybody sees. Now you people still want to call me a weasel? Still want to call me names when I'm right? Go ahead. You just make yourself look stupid. And in a mere three weeks, same man, Hulk Hogan, now known as Hollywood Hogan, will team with the worm, Dennis Rodman, in the main event at WCW's Bash at the Beach. You've been close to Rodman. Uh, only one time. What's good is if you get tired of looking at him, you can read him. There's all this kind of drawings on him he draws. Those are tattoos. Oh. Buddy, you, you fell asleep in a newspaper in Central Park. You, you, you try to read those tattoos. There's a one, two, almost got a three. Well, it's kind of hieroglyphics, you know. You have to be educated. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to get into it here. Well, we are seeing Dean Malenko trying to rebound after a catastrophic loss at the hands of Jeff Jarrett. And 
But what happened? Now, uh, Eddie Guerrero came out of nowhere, had a sling on, climbed that top rope, jumped, jumped Dean Malenko when he was flat on his back in trouble. I mean, come on. Problems exist between the two. I mean, if you can go back and, and talk about the history between Malenko and Guerrero and what Malenko attempted to do to Eddie's family, to Chavo Jr., to Hector. I mean, it's all there. Come Little on, you had nine months and you come up with Hector. You can come up with another name. You name your burrow Hector. You don't name your kid Hector. You got a brother named Hector? Eddie has a brother named Hector, and you know that. And you're just trying to make fun of the name. And what's his other brother's name? Eddie's brother, Chavo Sr. Chavo. Pick up. You know what Chavo means in Spanish? Uh, no, no, I don't. Here's Malenko with a cover. One, two. Oh! Jericho, you can see his eyes were open, looking at the referee, and he knew that he could get out of it, but he let the count go to two that time. Chavo is uh, a derogative to the word coward. A derogative <laughs> the word. Yeah, a derogative. Where'd you come up with this, Tony? I, Tony, you're talking like you're nuts. <laughs> I'm repeating what you just said. Yeah, you didn't hear it from me. Oh! Malenko puts on the abdominal stretch. He really put the brakes on that time with the attempted Irish whip from yeah. Chris Jericho. And that's a great move because that's what throws you off. He goes to throw you into those ropes and you figure you're going that way. All of a sudden he stops you, pulls your back. Your whole body just, just snaps back and forth. That's why you can slap the stretch on him that easy. Boy, does he know what he's doing in that ring. It's a, it's a pleasure to watch a man like this. Yes, it is. And I would agree with that. And look at Jericho. Jericho with a lot of tenacity and desire here. He just absorbed everything, and now he's back into it. He's going to follow Malenko in. A patented Malenko move. One step ahead. The quickness. Jericho blocked the double axe handle. Belly to belly. Released it. All the way to the ropes on the other side. And the cover. Jericho, one, two, no. I don't think Malenko's going to get beat twice in a couple weeks. Well, I wouldn't think that either, but sometimes you, you never don't know. know. That's right. You never know how they're going to react to a loss. But it's up. Especially here at WCW. Anybody oh. can beat you any time. That was great anticipation that time by Malenko. You know, anticipation is better than preparation. You can prepare all you want. Small package. One, two. Malenko fighting. Finally got out of it. You can prepare all you want for a Dean Malenko, but you're never going to be prepared for him. But if you can anticipate what he's going to do, you're better off. I'd rather have a wrestler working for me that could anticipate rather than prepare himself. Oh, one, two, no. The bridge suplex, and for a second time now, Malenko gets out of it. Small package, bridge suplex. How about that counter move? The Iceman turns him over. One, two, oh. get up, get him. Did not get him, but it was pretty darn close. Boy, the hand was on its way down, wasn't it? it and was. he's frustrated. Look at Malenko. What can I do to beat this man? Up on top. Down. The wrestlers are so much better today, Tony, than one, they were. One, two, no. One, no. Again, look at this. Incredible turn of events here. Who's going to get the pin? It looks like a lazy boy gone nuts. Yes, you're it right. Reclined, it went back. It went upside down. It went oh. around. And Malenko hits hard. Jericho wants to make sure that he's down. Groggy for the missile drop kick. Couldn't get him up. Forward roll inside. Yes. Up and you notice as he took him over, he rolled him down. He hooked his leg. That's a wrestler. That's a man that knows his crap. Dean Malenko. <laughs> Dean Malenko gets the win here on WCW Worldwide Wrestling, and there's a very dejected Jericho who gave it his all. It was a great match. Don't pout. Learn from it. You were in there with a man that mastered you. You were in there with a man that beat you with a rusty maneuver. Take a look at this, Mr. Jericho. Take a good look, because you're in there with Dean Malenko, the man of a thousand holes. Look at that. Malenko went underneath, caught him in that... Beautiful, beautiful scoop body slam. And look at that, hooked him in the midair. Look how the legs are wrapped around. He knows what he's doing. There's are, your winner. Are you ready? I'm ready. You want to hear his next week? I want to hear his next week. Where's my paper now? There's your... There's
There it is. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Okay, uh... Oh, you bonehead. Public Enemy next week. Now, wait a Can't minute. Can't you see that? Okay, now. Scotty Riggs will be here next say week. That. I knew you were. Okay. Hey, Hacksaw uh, Jim Duggan will uh, be here. Oh, oh. Hacksaw yeah. Jim. He'll be here, and Ice Train will be here and, as well. And uh, what is manager? Um, Kenny Law. I was going to say that. And for the man who's a step behind the brain, I'm Tony Schiavone. See you next week on Worldwide Wrestling. Next week? Yes. Universal Studios, Florida, time for Worldwide Wrestling, and this week, Bobby the Brain here in Tag Team Action, Public Enemy. And Mrs. Riggs' little boy, Scotty's here. Scotty Riggs will be here, plus watch out for Hacksaw Jim Duggan in singles competition. And the world's only human caboose is here, Ice Train. You should have said that, plus, in Tag Team Action, High Voltage, it's all coming up next. And along with the Brain, Bobby Heenan... I'm Tony Schiavone. Welcome to Worldwide from Universal Studios in Florida, where later on in our main event, tag team action featuring High Voltage and the amazing French Canadians. But let's talk about Bash of the Beach, July 13th. Who will be the mystery partner for Diamond Dallas Page against Scott Hall and the Macho Man Randy Savage of the NWO? You know, Diamond Dallas Page has always operated on his own. He's never asked for help from anyone. So now for him to go out and get a mystery partner to go against Savage and Hall of the NWO, I want to just see who this partner is going to be. It could be anybody. Don't forget, anybody. he was up in the rafters in the balcony when he made that big announcement not too long ago. And what about the worm, Dennis Rodman? Will team with Hollywood Hulk Hogan against the giant in the total package, Lex Luger? You know, Rodman's been pushing around a lot of guys his whole life. A lot of big guys he's been pushing around. But I wonder if he bit off a little more than he can chew. We saw how he operates. He hit a guy from behind with the ball, hit yes. the giant. But he dropped about four or five good elbows. But he's got to remember one thing. Hogan's his partner. And Hogan's never helped anybody but Hogan. That's exactly right, fans. We'll talk more about that, but right now, let's go to the ring. The opening bout this week on Worldwide Wrestling. All right, now in the arena for the opening bout, tag team action here on WCW Worldwide Wrestling, and the fans getting into this duo. Rocco Rock, Public Enemy, one of the top tag teams in the world. Wasn't too long ago that they told uh, Gene Okerlund, as a matter of fact, recently at the Great American Bash, they want to be considered now top contender for the World Tag Team title. And they got a point. They are former tag team champions. Well, you're right about that. Anybody that's a former champion, they usually consider. But, you know, these guys are very dangerous. They use tables. They use chairs. They use anything they can get their hands on. And you know, everybody just seems to be liking their style. And no one seems to be doing anything about them. Fans certainly do like them. Look at the fans. What's wrong with the fans? Oh, nothing. Nothing. And here's, a, here's an interesting point that we've talked about so many times. This duo taking the table and using the table as part of the uh, part of the action. The referees, there's X marks the spot. I guess that's going to be the target for later on. The referees have allowed the duo to take the table in the ring and use it on their opponents. And that's unprecedented in our sport. Well, usually by the time they get in the ring, the match is over, totally out of control. I don't know what the tape for it. That's either a bullseye or, or the table's been hurt trying to fix it. I don't know. Look at look at David Fenzer. Never looked better. Oh, for crying That's out loud. That's the funny thing. He's got a bow tie on. Look at that. <laughs> no, I was talking about the hat he had on his head. We're out of here. All right. Doc Dean, Robbie Brookside. This is the opening bout on Worldwide Wrestling, and Mickey J is your referee. Certainly, as we know, outsiders of the World Tag Team Champs were coming up at Bash of the Beach. The Outsiders are going to be split, so to speak, because Scott Hall teams with the Macho Man Randy Savage. Have you heard about this mystery partner, who he's going to be for DDP? No, but what I have heard is a lot of talk about who's, who's he going to be. Everyone's very interested. And I heard the NWO has put out a bounty. I heard they put out a little cash for anybody to find out who. You know, Diamond Dallas is a, he's a, a loner, so who knows who he's come up with. Where have you heard about this bounty? Well, I have, I have my sources. Oh, you do? Yes. If the NWO wants to know bad, and they're throwing away some pretty big bucks out here. Have you taken him up on the offer? Maybe to do some investigative... There's a buck to be made. You're going to attempt it. I can tell but you But I that. have honor, you know. Yeah, you have none. Put to the back by Brookside, oh. and Doc Dean got the foot in. Here's a tag, and this duo from Great Britain looking good here in the opening moments of this tag team bout. Cindy Rocco in. Double drop kick on target here. How they about that? They wrestle a lot over in Europe together. Yes, they do. In Germany in Great Britain, in Austria, in France. They are internationally known. 
and their success here in the United States, not what it's been in Europe, but they still have been very competitive, and right now, they're an old tag team trick here, getting the referee's attention and then breaking the rules on the other side. Now Probably he should get his partner to come in too, and both put the boots to him and then make the switch. That's good tag team. Yeah, see, I was saying that this move probably was developed by Bobby the Brain Heenan in his years as a manager. Into the midsection of the chest. They did create a lot of very interesting yes, you moves did. in tag team. Yes, right you now. did. You have been known as the biggest cheater the sport has ever seen. Well, thank you very much, Tony. You're welcome. Thank in, you. In the corner in the back, you really, you really like that distinction. Hey, I know a lot about cheating. I've had seven very successful marriages. And a knee to the head that time, and Rocco Rock goes down. Oh! You're what? You're in number seven right now? No. Number eight. Twenty-six. No, your business though. <laughs> so you've had twenty-one unsuccessful ones, or, two, or uh, well, nineteen unsuccessful ones. I haven't found most of them yet. Okay. In the ropes, Whoa. missing a clothesline that time. Rocco ah. Rock connected with uh, Sahi Moonsault. That is out of the Ultimate Dragon textbook that time, and he connected. But both men are hurt here. In the exchange, and here comes Johnny Grunge. Running Lariat, scoop slam. Down goes Brookside, and then down goes Dean. Johnny Grunge gets the action going quickly on the outside. Watch out on the far side now as head first goes Brookside to the safety rail. Doc Dean tried to block it, could not. And now Brookside hit in the head. That staggers him, and he's on the table. I believe Brookside is the main course. Rocco Rock! Oh! No, no, I believe we're having a sight of Rocco tonight. I believe so too. And now as he hits hard, a roll up one, two. Almost. Doc, Doc Dean almost had an upset victory there. Well, this team's been together a while. Johnny Grunge a missed. A, and oh, to the midsection. Here comes Doc Dean from the double team. Sends Brookside down. Brookside hit hard. Grunge rolls him up one, two. This one's over. So how about that? The table did not come into play, although, as you can see, it did for Rocco Rock in, in a roundabout way. Well, the table didn't do a whole lot for Rocco that Rocco enjoys, I'll guarantee you that. He would have rather gone through the table with Mr. Brookside under him, but, but they won the match, I guess they have to be grateful for that. And they still lay their claim to one of the top contenders for the Tag Team Championship. Rocco Rock, Johnny Grunge, they are an odd duo. Public enemy. With that in mind, we go to an odd announcer, Bobby the Brain Heenan. Go ahead, Brain. Odd? What do you mean odd? Well, different. You're different than most people I've met. Well, it's good to be different. You know, you great to be different. You don't want to be like everybody else. I don't want to be like Johnny Grunge and Rocco Rock. I don't want to be like Mike Tenay Lee Marshall. And I don't want to be like anybody but myself. I like being me. You like me and you? Uh, you're half right. Try being me. We'll be back with more on Worldwide after this. I'm out there with us. This portion of WCW Worldwide Wrestling is brought to you by Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know use Valvoline. We welcome you back to Worldwide Wrestling, where later on in this telecast, the amazing French Canadians will meet high voltage. Plus, we're going to be talking a lot about WCW's Bash of the Beach coming up in the month of July, July 13th, where Dennis Rodman and Hollywood Hulk Hogan will be a tag team. First time ever now for Dennis Rodman in a match. And as we see Viano Ford, the masked man from Mexico, make his way to the ring. He has a tough opponent in one half of the former tag team American Males and Scotty Riggs. You know, you're right about that. I'll, I'll elaborate a little more on Dennis the Worm Rodman in a moment. I think... I think everybody's looking at this the wrong way, and I'll tell you why in a moment. Scotty Riggs here at uh, Universal Studios Florida, as always, a big crowd on hand when we are in Florida. And there you see fans here. We've got some NWO fans, some WCW fans, and uh, good to have you with us wherever you are. Well, Diamond Dallas and his mystery partner, of course, a lot of people now talking about the split of Mongo and Jeff Jarrett in the U.S. title match that they'll have coming up at Bash of the Beach. Now, there's a very, very interesting pay-per-view. So many things could happen so many different ways. That's always like that in a pay-per-view. I mean, but no. now, so, you know, with a mystery partner, and you got Dennis Rodman, you got Mongo, you got Jarrett, you know, I mean, they're all great, but just 
It'll be very different now. Backhand chop over the top, and a great elevation that time by Ricks. And Deano four, sending him down hard. You know, Rodman, talking about his athletic ability, we all know the man's a tremendous athlete. I mean, look how high the man can jump. Look at the size of the man. What, he's six foot eight or something? Sure, I feel and you saw what he did to the Giant when he hit him from the back. He knew enough to do that. He dropped those elbows on him. Now, if you think Rodman's going to get in that ring and wrestle and try to get out of, like a Dean Malenko and try to go hold for hold, that's not going to happen. So forget that. But Rodman knows how to fight. He knows how to fight a, a lot of big people for a long period of time. And he's a great athlete, so don't sell him short at all. Don't forget, fans, WCW's uh, Bash of the Beach is available exclusively on pay-per-view. It is uh, Sunday night, the 13th of July. Of course, if you have the mini dish or satellite dish, you call your respective numbers for Direct TV and be a part of it. Or call your local cable operator and join us. WCW presents, oh, good move, Bash of the Beach, Sunday, July 13th. The event available exclusively on pay-per-view. Don't you dare be left out. If I was rigged, I'd turn that mask around backwards on the guy. What would that accomplish? It's easier to fight a guy that can't see you. Doesn't that make sense? Isn't that against the rules, though? And oh, yeah, you wouldn't want to break the rules. How about that one? Kind of steamed by Riggs on the right side and just steamrolled the Viano four down. You ever see Viano one, two, or three? Nope, never did. But you know Mike Tanay is going to be going to Mexico City, and Tijuana, and into Mexico very soon to bring back some special reports of our... Great athletes from south of the border from Mexico. We'll find out more about Viano 1, 2, and 3. There's a two count. You know, they sent him about two months ago to Mexico. They told him to come back and report. Said he had Montezuma's revenge for three days. Never left the room. Mike Tanay? Well, that's the report he gave him. In the corner, and Viano 4 runs in. Reckless abandon that time, but comes back again. Scotty Riggs going after him. Oh! And another close line. With authority. Yes, sir. And a back elbow. Riggs sending Viano four down. Here we go. The whip in, and nobody home for that one. Ooh. So the, always a sound I enjoy, the air coming out of a human. You like that, huh? Yeah. Kick him real good in the back. Kick a guy like Hogan all day, I'd like to hear that. One, two, three, and he got it. Viano four tried to kick out, but the forearm shot was on target, and Scotty Riggs gets the win on Worldwide Wrestling. And it's still to come, Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Roadblock in singles competition, plus the big man Ice Train and Big Al, and our tag team main event as we head now to the month of July, and Bash at the Beach, live from Daytona Beach and the Ocean Center. Time for the replay, and that means the brain. Go ahead, Brain. I'll go ahead when I see the replay. Go ahead, Brain. I haven't seen the replay yet. Now I see the replay. Scotty Riggs shoots his opponent with up the drop kick right on the button. Gets the on four. The on four kind of loses balance here, and Riggs just drives him into that match. Ducks under. Big, big flying elbow to the side of the head. Hooks him with a one, two, three. Your winner, Mrs. Riggs' little boy, Scotty. And we're going to hit see uh, Mrs. Block's big boy road pretty soon. Stay with us on Worldwide. We are going to be sending it on the road with our colleague Mike Tanay here in a few moments on WCW Worldwide Wrestling. And fans, of course, the very end of the month of June, end of the month of May, means back to the beach. Can you ever remember... More anticipation for a tag team. the month of May. Did I say May? Yes, you're all turned around. I'm you always blame me for these things. I meant into the month of July. And, of course, on July 13th is the Bash of the Beach as the big man Roadblock makes his way in. Can you ever remember more anticipation for a tag team event? We're talking about in the entire sports world than Hollywood Hogan and the Worm Dennis Rodman together, the main event on Sunday night, July 13th. Probably the two most talked about people in sports today. And I would, agree, that. I would agree with that. And what, what, what plan are they going to come up with? What strategy will they employ against Lex Luger and the Giant? Because as you know, based on what happened recently at Nitro, 
Luger the Giant more than want to win the match. They want to maybe eat out some revenge on Hogan and Rodman. Well, you're talking about Hogan, Rodman, Luger, Giant. But what happened a little while back was Hogan, Rodman, Paul, Nash, Six, in the NWO. It's going to be different now. I'm sure, the NWO is going to try to pull whatever they want to pull. And rightly so, they, they get away with it. Good. But uh, Luger and the Giant are going to come up with something. You know that. All right, the great American hacksaw Jim Duggan against Roadblock. Well, he talked about a hard-hitting matchup. We got one for you here on Worldwide. Roadblock, one of the biggest and strongest. And, of course, the man you're looking at right now, fans, with the red, white, and blue, maybe the, the heaviest hitter our sport's ever seen. Got some big paws on him. Get a look at this Roadblock when he gets in there. I want everybody out there watching right now to get a good look at the size of this man, and I'll tell you something about him. A little bit over 400 pounds at 410 is Roadblock, and Roadblock is the type of man, he's very smart, he's staying out of the ring while Hacksaw Jim Duggan went on the inside with the flag, and look at the size of Roadblock. Come on, tough guy, come on! He and Duggan, a little shoving match to begin things here. He blocked that one. Look at, oh boy, Duggan is just so strong, so powerful. But I doubt if anybody can do what Luger did to Roadblock. Well, put him in that Put him in the rack. Hogan and Rodman should remember this. But that big man there was across the shoulders of Lex Luger yelling uncle a short time ago. Well, then Hogan was too, as a matter of fact. That's right, well then he can tell Rodman what it's like. The chant of USA for the fans here in attendance behind Duggan. Got a handful of ponytail that time, enabling Roadblock now to get the advantage. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it for the short time he's been in the wrestling sport. He may be the, he may win the United States Championship quicker than any man. I'm talking about Steve Mongo McMichaels and his match with Jeff Jarrett. Well, his wife Deborah now solidly behind her husband. Well, he should be. Well, I agree with that. We don't agree on much. Well, she gets a better offer than somebody else. The business is business. Once again, the chant of USA to the fans, and that really revs up Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Firing back now out of this big, massive bear hug, but now the 400-pound roadblock, just too much power, and he may have Duggan out here, Brain. Well, if I was roadblock, I'd have tucked my head under Duggan's right or left armpit there, got real down low, picked him up, and just squeezed it on that lower back. That's what I'd have done. Had him in the air where he was helpless. And I'm off the mat. Duggan gets away from that now, and trying to uh, regain his composure here as now being stalked by Roadblock, but I think Duggan now is getting a second wind here. In the jaw now, right hand combination blows, right left combinations. He's up on the turnbuckle and he's driving the hand into the side of the head. He hit him up. 20 good ones right in the yap. Ten times actually, as the fans counted with him into the corner. Roadblock! One of his big moves missed that time. And, oh boy, Duggan with a roll of tape around the hand. Oh, well, that's illegal right there. Well, so is the table. I'm not talking about table just because that's illegal. That don't make that right. That's illegal. And he wins it. Anyway, that's how Jim Duggan is your winner with the roll of tape. The man who's a third generation tape fist champion and a great fighter is your winner on Worldwide Wrestling. And he earned that one because Roadblock was a few moves away from getting that win. Watch out! Oh. I'm looking for you! We're looking for you, tough guy! Third generation tape fist champion, right? That's what he is. You know, the first two generations were both his grandmother and his mom. Another look at this. Roadblock shoots in Duggan. Goes in. A little slow there. Didn't anticipate Duggan moving, I don't think. Duggan takes out this roll of tape, which on a sweaty hand, you tape up a fist like boxers do. It makes the hand like a rock. Nails him right between the eyes. Night, night time for the roadblock. One, two, and a three. Your winner, Ho Hacksaw, Jim Duggan. Fans, when we come back, some big action from Nitro recently. Still to come, the Canadiens in high voltage in our tag team main event on Worldwide Wrestling. Stay right with us.
Welcome back to Worldwide Wrestling, everyone, and we have some uh, great action still to come, including High Voltage and the Amazing French Canadians and much more. As we head into Bash of the Beach, the month of July is going to be red hot. And can you imagine, you go back in the various events at Bash of the Beach. Remember, a couple of years ago, we were on the beach, Huntington Beach, California. What happened there? But remember one year ago, Bash of the Beach, that was the event where Hulk Hogan turned his back on everyone. We all, up until that time, instead of you, Brian, you always thought, uh, I guess correctly so, that he was a lowlife. But we all have been cheering Hollywood Hogan, or at that time Hulk Hogan, throughout his career up until that moment. But it was that night in Daytona Beach, 1996, where he turned his back on everyone. Well, you're right about that, Shivani. He turned his back on the world, is what he did. You know, this man was supported by millions and millions of people all over the world. Like him or not, I never did. I always knew what kind of a man he is. And I'll guarantee this, every member of the NWO is being used, being used by Hollywood, Hulk Hogan, even Bischoff. And you know, and there's a theory there that that when uh, when Scott Hall first appeared, and then when Kevin Nash appeared, that this group had a focus. But when Hollywood Hulk Hogan became a part of the group, that the focus went off from uh, the NWO taking over the world into just watching Hollywood Hulk Hogan's back. Of course, there's a lot of people say he was behind this all the time. Well, I know that he was behind it all the time. And what he wants is to control the world. I mean, face it, Hulk Hogan was and probably is one of the biggest stars in the history this sport has ever had. And now he wants to control everything, the television end of it, everything. And he won't wrestle, he, he does it because he's a greedy, he's a greedy man. Fans, don't forget that Bash of the Beach comes your way on Sunday night, the 13th of July. The event available exclusively on pay-per-view. Hogan and Rodman in the main event against Lex Luger and the Giant. It's going to be one of the biggest nights ever in our sport. All eyes of the sports world will be on Daytona Beach in the Ocean Center. Call your local cable operator right now. Sunday night, July 13th at 7 o'clock Eastern Time for the Great American Bash. Mm -hmm. Ice train. He gets look. He gets thicker every week. Look at the size of the shoulders on this guy. And there's Teddy Long, the little train that could. Teddy Long, uh, his manager, oh. in and oh. big out of the way. It's the best thing to do against Ice Train. He is so strong and powerful. Just stay out of his way. And look at Big Al. Big Al's Al a big guy. Nice pickup. Don't waste your time though, Big Al. Leg drop. Going to try to make a cover. And you heard Teddy Long there scream, kick out, kick out. That's exactly what happened. It's well, pretty bad when you got to yell that to a man. You should know it. But that's all energy. I understand that. Bang that head, Big Al. Big Al going after the head and the upper body of Ice Train. And Ice Train mounting in a big comeback here now. Take off, Big Al. In, down. Oh. I believe the, uh, the brakes are out on that train. Ice train picks him up. Oh. Time for the train wreck. And that's it. You know, when he gets the momentum going, when he gets fired up like that and gets angry, you can't control Ice Train. Well, that man Teddy Long better be able to control him because that big man Ice Train is going to hurt somebody. But that's what he's here for. That's what he wants to do. He wants to be recognized. He wants to be the big man here, just like everybody else, just like Hogan, just like Rodman, just like Hall and Nash. Everybody wants a, a big chunk of money, that big star in their dressing room. Well, the only way to get it is to win and get noticed. That's what Ice Train thinks he has to do right here. He's going for the cover. Now he's got Big Al. Now that's illegal to hold on to a man's vest like that, but he got away with it. It's not illegal. Go ahead. It is too illegal. Takes the straps down. This is the big train wreck. Up he goes, and down he comes. Your winner, the human caboose, Ice Train. Massive Ice Train is your winner. Coming up next, our main event matchup on Worldwide, the amazing French Canadians and High Voltage. Stay with us. We'll be right back after you listen to this. This portion of WCW Worldwide Wrestling is brought to you by Extra Classic Bubblegum. Now, the flavor lasts longer than ever. Two of the biggest names in the sports world will be together. 
Rodman and Hogan. The main event at Bash of the Beach on Sunday, July 13th. And exclusively on pay-per-view. Now time for some great tag team action featuring the amazing French Canadians. You got a, you got a prediction what's going to happen when Robin and Hogan wrestle together? Well, one man, one man wears a belt and one man's got a couple rings. They're champions. And you know they got a plan. You know that, Tony, just like you're sitting here. And you know as well as I do, the plan is not going to involve just those two. It's going to involve Hall, Nasty, Outsiders, the Wolf Pack, the Macho Man, Randy Savage, everyone involved in the NWO, Buff Bagwell, uh, as well as Scott Flash Norton. They're all going to get involved in this some way. Well, you never know, but you, you can't count that out either. Danger, high voltage. But you know, Luger's no dummy either. He's not the brightest guy sometimes, but he knows what he's up against here now. I imagine him and the Giants have a plan. They're going to have to. How about the muscles on high voltage? Big and powerful and uh, two young men, products of the WCW power plant brain. That's right. And they're young and they're aggressive and they feel it now. They feel the energy and the fans. They, they feel what's going through this sport right now and they want a piece of it. And they're ready. They're going to be ready real, real soon. Within a couple months. Now we would appreciate if you bunch of hillbillies would stand up they really butcher this national anthem. Not really. It's a hard song to sing. It's hard. <laughs> you gotta be good. You make it worse, too. If you're a Canadian, you gotta have a tear in your eye. Jacques Rougeau and Carl Ouellette, the amazing French Canadians against High Voltage and our tag team main event on Worldwide Wrestling. July means hot weather, it means the beach. It means right in the middle of summer and we're gonna be going to Daytona Beach for the Bash of the Beach on the 13th. As we said earlier, all eyes of the sporting world will be on that night where Hogan and Rodman will be together. Rodman proved, as we've seen in this program and the footage from WCW Monday Nitro, that he is going to do whatever it takes to win using the tactics of the NWO. Tony, shut your eyes and just picture this. I would never shut my eyes no, sitting next no, to you. No, picture this. Now, picture this. Now, you're at the bash at the beach. Picture the giant got Rodman by the net, and he's holding him up with one hand up to the rooftop. You look behind him, you see Luger's got Hollywood Hulk Hogan stretched across his road. Stretch across his back up there in the rack. You'd like to see that, wouldn't you? I think everyone would. I think of this too now. You could be seeing the giant laid flat out. You could be seeing Luger laying next to him flat out. You could see the whole ringside building, the whole ringside area surrounded by NWO people. And you could see Rodman in there with the spray can again with Hollywood. Painting up the town, you might say. So it could go either way. You can't call this one. It's going to be a great one, and you can join us here. Goes Colonel Parker. Colonel Robert Parker, a man we know quite well, taking advantage of uh, one of the high voltage. Chaos is his name on the outside. Oh, my. Mm. Now, you know as well as I do, Tony, Hogan wouldn't get involved in a tag match with Luger, let alone the Giant, and have a partner he couldn't trust out there. Yeah, you're, sure you're right. I mean, it, obviously, he can trust Rodman from what we have seen. Rodman has proven that he does what it takes to help Hollywood Hulk Hogan or maybe protect Hollywood Hulk Hogan. That's what it's all about, Brain. Well, Robin's the kind of a guy, he knows what happens when you're, when you're down and when everybody's not giving you much of an opportunity and they're writing you off, then you got to come back and you just have to fight a little harder. And he's used to doing that. Carr will at 310 pounds. Oh! Great maneuver that time from Rage on the outside. Like a guided missile. It was a tremendous flying maneuver from the top rope. And now Chaos needs to make a tag. Colonel Parker directing traffic here. And here's a tag, Rougeau back in, and here comes Rage, the young man in. Look at those heavy right hands, which uh, drop kick. Scoop slap. Powerful young man, really strong. Sending Rougeau oh. into the midsection. Now for the ride to the left side, pick up, and a back body drop. 
One thing that we've been very impressed about as far as high voltage is concerned is that they don't do things that's not a part of their makeup or style. They'll only try those powerful maneuvers or the high risk ones when they're in control. Well, that's smart wrestling. You don't want to do anything that you don't know how to do. That makes sense. It makes well, good sense. Yeah, but we've seen wrestlers try that before. Well, of course. You're always going to see something look at, like that. Out of, look at this pickup. Double team. That's oh. their move. That is it. Cover one, two, and Colonel Parker has seen it up. Well, he saved them from losing this match. He sure did, and right. that's going to call for the disqualification. High Bolt is going to win this by DQ. Well, he's going to get his hands on the Colonel here. And in the meantime, he's going to get nailed in the back by Rougeau. And Chaos pummeled here by Willette. High voltage with a win, but they suffer a beating here at the hands of Colonel Parker and the amazing French Canadian. And the Colonel doesn't like to lose. He's not going to be a happy Colonel now. He's upset. He's going to get, he's going to get on the amazing French Canadians about this, but he's also going to get on the officials. You don't want to get the Colonel mad. And a big win as the Canadians stay in the center of the ring. And as they do that, fans, here's a big reminder. We have a great program for you next week. Be sure to join us on WCW Worldwide Wrestling when, from the NWO, for the first time, Buck Bagwell will be here. And get a load of this, Tony. The big man. The biggest man in sports. The giant. He'll be here getting ready for Bags of the Beach. Plus, Mortis will be with us along with James Vandenberg. And the man that they can't stand the sight of, this man, Glacier, will be here. That's all next week, fans, as we head to Bash of the Beach. For Bob the Brain, Heenan, and Lee Marshall, I'm Tony Giovanni. See you next week. Universal Studios in Florida. See ya.